welcome current and future viewers to another episode of Drama Mama Investigates, the show where we take a piece of uh, exploding internet drama and we get down to the bottom of it. In this show, we will be discussing the living nightmare hell that is Activision Blizzard. If you're not familiar with the company Activision Blizzard, they are one of the biggest, if not, I think they might actually be the biggest gaming company in the entire world. They are a billion dollar company. This is one of the most valuable entertainment companies on the entire planet. Um, and they're responsible for a bunch of really, really famous games, including World of Warcraft, the entire Warcraft series, Diablo, Starcraft 2, Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm. Um, it is a a phenomenally um, storied company that uh, has tied to its name some of the most... Oh, yeah, and of course, I completely forgot Overwatch. I have these very silly Overwatch glasses. Look, I can put them on. I can't see anything with them, but I do have these uh, Overwatch glasses. Um, and uh, we're going to be having a very serious Drama Mama today. Um, as we all know, a lot of the stuff that we touch on in Drama Mama has very serious themes. Um, and, uh, and, and today is no different. So, please bear with me for one moment while I put up our content warnings. Unfortunately, we have some pretty serious content warnings to watch out for today. Which is systemic abuse, rape, death, and sexual assault, okay? These are part and parcel of this story. Um, and today, my goal is going to be if that if you're out of the loop, I'm going to get you into the loop. And not just that, but we're going to go through all of the receipts that we can possibly manage to go through. Today's Drama Mama is probably going to be longer than average. And the reason for that is because there is an abundance of information on this that we need to go through and see. And when I say it's going to be long, I'm saying it's going to be long. We have a lot to go through. And you might be wondering, well, you know, Demon Mama, why are we going through all of this stuff? Well, they're the number one gaming company in the world. World of Warcraft is a cultural touchstone. So... Before we go any further, let me tell you a little bit about my own personal involvement with, uh, with Blizzard. When I was very young, I have always been a gamer. I don't know if you can tell, I got gamer stuff on my wall, I got a gamer shirt. You can't see my bookshelf right now because the camera angle needs to be adjusted and we're gonna do that. But I have a lot of gamer stuff, needless to say. I'm a bit of a gamer. Um, I played a lot of WoW. Um, when I was a kid, one of the first games I fell in love with was Warcraft 2. One of the, 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 probably the second game I fell in love with was Starcraft. These were games, um, that I truly loved. And I grew up with these games. And when World of Warcraft came out, I played World of Warcraft. I played World of Warcraft. I was a mythic tier raider in World of Warcraft during, um, the Legion and uh, Battle for Azeroth expansions, which are more of the recent expansions. Um, I played it as a part of a huge guild on multiple occasions. I came back to the game many, many times. I have countless hours plugged into Hearthstone. Um, I've literally gone to official Blizzard events, like hype events. Um, I went to like a Blizzard fucking after party that was in, par in partnership with Asus, and it was wild. Um, I love... World of Warcraft, and I loved Blizzard's games. I got super into uh, Overwatch. I was in the alpha. Um, I literally, I mean, arguably, my relationship with my with one of my partners was like started on Overwatch because we played Overwatch together after we met each other and we got really close. Um, you know, I have a lot of memories attached to uh, Blizzard, and I'm sure a lot of you in the chat probably do as well. Um, if you're, um, you know. If you're if you're a gamer, you've probably played a Blizzard game at some point. You probably have some really special uh, memories with um, 
with uh with with the various titles owned by Blizzard. And it would be really easy to handle all of this if we could just say that Blizzard isn't the same company that it was. That it was, uh, you know, bought out by Activision, and that was what did it. And, you know, it, it, they, they, they got bought, and it ruined everything. You know, we've heard that story a million times in the gaming industry. A studio gets bought by a bigger studio, they fire everybody, they hire people on for cheaper, and the games start to suck. But that's not true. In truth, this is a problem that goes to the very root of Blizzard. I mean, to the root. And we're going to talk about all of that today. And it is going to be a little hard. Um, because uh, a lot of these products, these games, are have become more than just games. They've built communities around them. They've built in entire communities around them. We People have gotten married in games like World of Warcraft because these games are so big and so expansive and so involving and have so much to do in them that you really can get lost in them. And I don't even think that's necessarily a sad thing. Um, you know, that doesn't even necessarily, you know, that's not, I don't even view that as a sad thing. I view that as an amazing thing. Um, that people can have so much fun and be so passionate about this world and its, um, and its, uh, you know, features. And another thing is that the worlds of, uh, of the, the games made by Blizzard are deeply story rich. They're known for being incredibly lore deep. They have so much lore. It's like Star Wars. It, you know, the meme about Wikipedia, you know, the Star Wars meme where it's like, you, you know, you go on the, on the Wikipedia and you find out that like there was a hole in Darth Vader's left shoe and that's why he walked funny. You know, they have an explanation for it. It's just like that with World of Warcraft. There's an explanation for everything. Every single thing in the universe has some kind of lore tie. Um, and so for a lot of people, uh, what we're going to talk about is going to be really intense because the creation of these games has been a bloody affair. And, and I mean really bad. And that's what we're going to be talking about today in full um, here on Drama Mama. And we're going to be getting into it um, in full. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to read, uh, we are going to read a, um, uh, we are going to take a look at the raw text of the current lawsuit, and we are also going to read an article about this. Activision Blizzard sued over frat boy culture and harassment. This is a news article from Bloomberg Law that is going to sort of touch on all of this, okay? Video game giant Activision Blizzard Incorporated, maker of games including World of Warcraft and Diablo, fosters a frat boy culture in which female employees are subjected to constant sexual harassment, unequal pay, and retaliation, according to a lawsuit filed by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing. That's right. What you're hearing here is that this is not just an employee lawsuit. This is quite literally the state. The state of California is suing Activision Blizzard. That is how large and widespread the problem has allegedly become. We're going to get into that. A two-year investigation by the state agency found that the company discriminated against female employees in terms and conditions of employment, including compensation, assignment, promotion, and termination. Company leadership consistently failed to take steps to prevent discrimination, harassment, and retaliation, the agency said. So keep in mind that not only is there an issue of widespread sexual harassment, but also there was contractual discrimination as in the state was able to go and look and see that women just get paid less women just get less benefits women get promoted less for no discernible reason other than that they're women and we're going to get into all of this 
According to the complaint filed Tuesday in Los Angeles Superior Court, female employees make around 20 make up around 20% of the Activision workforce and are subjected to a pervasive frat boy workplace culture including cube crawls in which male employees drink copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior towards female employees. The agency alleges male employees play video games during the workday while delegating responsibilities to female employees, engaging in sexual banter, and joke openly about rape, among other things. D d do you see how extreme this is already? Female employees allege being held back from promotions because of the possibility they might become pregnant being criticized for leaving to pick up their children, and being kicked out of lactation rooms so male colleagues could use the rooms for meetings, the complaint says. You can't even use the lactation rooms. Female employees working for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and sur supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments about rape, and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior, the agency alleges. The suit also points to a female Activision employee who took her own life while on a company trip with her male supervisor. The employee had been subjected to intense sexual harassment previous to her death, including having nude photos passed around at a company holiday party, the complaint says. The agency seeks an injunction forcing compliance with workplace protections, as well as unpaid wages back uh, pay adjustments, back pay, and lost wages and benefits for female employees. We value diversity and strive to foster a workplace that offers inclusivity for everyone. There is no place in our company or industry or any industry for sexual misconduct or harassment of any kind, a spokesperson for Activision Blizzard said in a statement. We take every allegation seriously and investigate all claims. In cases related to misconduct, action was taken to address the issue. Spoiler. No, it wasn't. The DFEH includes distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We have been extremely cooperative with the DFEH throughout their investigation, including providing them with extensive data and ample documentation, but they refuse to inform us what issues they perceive. And we're going to see. Part of the reason why we're doing this, Drama Mama, is so we can go see for ourselves whether this was a perception of the state or whether this is actual. The picture the DFEH paints is not the Blizzard workplace of today, the company said. Hmm. So there we have it. That's the start off. That's the sort of summary of what we're looking at. But I want to show you what we're going to be getting into. Because, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, do we have a whole lot to go through. It gets so much worse. Oh my God, does it get worse? I'm gonna show you just how wild we're talking here. Uh, this is something. This is this is above and beyond. I mean, I don't even think we've touched this, um, anything like this, for a long time. So real quick, um, Jessica Metal says James Stephanie Sterling has been screaming from the rooftops about how rife with abuse the video game industry is, but nobody seems to believe them. That's something we're gonna talk about. We're going to talk about that uh, throughout this entire uh, Drama Mama segment because, oh my God, is there a lot uh, to talk about. This is so pervasive. The gaming industry is so full of sexual assault. The, the rape culture, the harassment culture in the gaming industry is so bad. Now, some of you may know that one of my best friends in the entire world works in the gaming industry. And she has been screaming about this for years, to the best that she could, to nothing. This is a, uh, this is something that has been ignored to a neglectful degree. The sexual harassment and sexual abuse goes, gets away so easily in the gaming world that it is almost a, a, it is a, a commonplace occurrence. I mean that, commonplace. And this case, this event, represents a 
a eruption of years of complaints, years of complaints that were ignored, years of complaints that were downplayed, years of victimization that was completely and utterly overlooked with, with malice, intentionally to protect people who are important. Now, let me remind you that uh, Bobby Kotick, the CEO of Activision Blizzard, was literally on Jeffrey Epstein's flight logs, just so we know, just so we're clear about that, and he himself has a absolute rap sheet of sexual assault and harassment allegations that pre-exist, that predate this. Video game mogul Bobby Kotick loses fight with top Hollywood litigator. Notice the date of this article, August 2, 2010. And this was a, uh, on July 6, a three-judge panel in the California Court of Appeals sided with Glasser, who alleged that Kodak had stiffed her firm out of more than one million in legal fees. Literally, this guy has paid hundreds of thousands of dollars out in sexual harassment uh, settlements. It's ridiculous. It's absurd. Like, look at this. This article, this is from 2010. Bobby Kotick is still the CEO. He's still in a position of power and a lot of power. Bobby Kotick is known for being extremely powerful. Yeah, oh yeah, I can read what he did to this lady. According to court records, the unhappy tale began in 2007 when a flight attendant named Cynthia Mad Madvig filed a lawsuit in Los Angeles County Superior Court against Kotick. Andrew Gordon, the head of Goldman Sachs uh, CEO's investment um, banking division, and Cove Management, a company the two created to manage a Gulfstream 3 private jet they jointly owned. Oh, God, it's doing the thing. I'm sorry. It's doing the thing. I don't know why it does this. It's so annoying. Okay. That should fix it, hopefully. The, the suit also named Phil Berg, a pilot employed by Cove. Madvig, who worked as a flight attendant on the jet, claimed that Berg had pressured her in 2006 to be his arm candy by accompanying him to dinners and outings during layovers. When she refused, Berg set out to make life miserable for Madvig, she alleged. The lawsuit said that Berg compelled her to clean the plane's toilets repeatedly while leering at her. And let's be clear about this. This isn't some... Uh, this isn't even some relationship. This is a em this is a employer of your employer who has enough power and influence that you don't have a choice but to fucking clean toilets while he watches. While he watches leering. Madvig claimed that she reported the incidents to Gordon but did not get a response. Two months later, Kotick fired her. By way of explanation, Kotick alleged allegedly told Madvig, the guys are unhappy with the hostile environment. So because she wouldn't be arm candy, because, because she wouldn't clean the toilets happy enough, she lost her job as a flight attendant. Jesus PR says the shareholders have issues with him due to him paying himself more in bonuses than is normal for whatever is normal for billionaires. Oh yeah, Bobby Kotick is is well known um for for paying himself massive massive amounts. Massive amounts. This guy makes so much money. Like I w I wonder if we can even find it. Yeah, let's look at his net worth. Can we get his net worth? Kotick has an estimated net worth of 650 million dollars. That's his net worth. He's like close to being a billionaire. Actually, wait, no. Hold on, it's been updated. As of July 2021, that's old. As of July 2021, net worth of Bobby Kotick is $8 billion. His business owns 175 million shares of Activision. He is the most overpaid CEO. Yeah, what the fuck? His salary is $30 million. His yearly salary is 30 fucking million dollars. Oh my God. Anyway, I wanted to give you the context on Bobby Kotick's background. What I'm about to show you now 
is why I think this idea that it's a frat boy culture. Let me just show you this. Let's take a look right here. This right here, currently, the World of Warcraft subreddit is maintaining a mega post um, in which they have documented every single Blizzard employee, former employee, um, and, and Blizzard, uh, like, you know, Blizzard partner who has made a statement. And I want you to watch this list. Are you ready? I want you to watch this list. Just watch. Still going. Still fucking going. And this is so far. This is being actively updated. So we're going to be going through a lot of these. We're going to be going through so many of these. Well, we're going to go through them and we're going to find out. So this is some of the stuff we're going to be going through, but we have some stuff to watch first, okay? And at some point, we are going to go through the, the official text of the, um, of the lawsuit because I think that's important to uh, look at. Yes, the blizzard, so far, the community response has been pretty good. The community, the blizzard community, the gamers in, in the blizzard world, or at least the communities that are associated with it, have been pretty, uh, pretty significantly vocal about this. Don't know if that will mean anything, but we'll get there. Before we go any further, I want to watch a video by somebody you probably know. Has anyone here heard of Alana Pierce? Alana Pierce is a really well-known uh, video game content creator. And Alana Pierce made a statement about this recently that I thought was particularly good. So, yeah, Alana's amazing. I've followed Alana for a long time. Let's take a look at it. So for anyone who didn't miss it, there's a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard for culture there. Um, I've had friends who've worked there and haven't heard anything about this, but the reality of it is it's jarring to me to see so many people on Twitter who are around the industry, who are like gaming fans who don't work in the industry, go, oh my god, this is horrific. When my reaction is, oh, so it's normal. It's... I mean, not Santa Monica Studio. Where I currently work, I feel like I'm treated incredibly well. I, I have had... Just, we've, we're only 35 seconds in, and I want you to, to understand how grim that is. The fact that this, what we just read, what you just heard, Alana is one of the most experienced gaming influencers on, on the internet. Alana's been around for fucking ever and has been super involved with a lot of these companies. And Alana is saying this shit is normal. Zero of those experiences, but even when I worked in tech before... The stories that I fucking have, just the shit that they did to me, like, like, I was repeatedly, like, grabbed or groped at work functions. And I would complain, like, to their faces, I'd be like, don't fucking touch me. And then they would be like, oh, of course, I'm so sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. And then they would do it again, because me reacting to it negatively was what made it funny to them. So me going, don't fucking touch me, leave me alone, stop touching me, is what- Holy fuck. Holy fuck. I made them go, oh, do it again. <laughs> and so they would just keep doing it. Uh, people would try to kiss me, often just would kiss me without my consent. What the Somebody fuck? like tried to put a shot into my mouth through their mouth. And I was like, I don't want any of this shit. So I went to HR and was like, this place is fucked up. The shit that's happening to me here is super fucked up. And... HR sent out this email um, and they were like, Alana is uncomfortable at work events. So they just blatantly sent out an email and basically blamed me for my... And what, what, what Alana just said there is shockingly common. You go to HR thinking they're going to help you, but remember, HR's job is to protect the company the company and the way that sometimes the sometimes the easiest way to protect the company is to make sure that nobody fucking speaks out and one of the best ways to make sure that nobody speaks out is that if you speak out you shame them you make sure everybody knows that that person is the one who uh who who told isn't that so ridiculous
Isn't HR supposed to make it anonymous? They can do whatever the fuck they want. That's the truth. The truth is that HR can get away with ever with whatever the fuck they want. And it, you, and the truth is that this shit has been going on for so long. This shit is so deeply ingrained in the gaming industry that this stuff has been sitting here boiling for years. People came and went and 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 got and got kissed against their will. They were raped and there was nothing that could be that was, there was nothing done about it. People went to HR and HR didn't help them or made their situation even worse. And this has only come to a head because it's happened to so many people that, that that the state actually managed to get involved. And keep in mind that most states would never get involved to this degree. Most states in the United States would never get involved. And guess what? You can't because most of these people aren't unionized, Louis Vuitton. And unionizing alone won't solve it because the union will be made up in some cases, of the same people who are doing this shit. And the union will be undermined because the management will look the other way to preserve the boys club. Own, repeat. The vast majority of the gaming industry is non-union, just so you're aware. In fact, more and more of the gaming industry is contract. Contract labor. Meaning you have nothing. You get nothing. Capo says, HR's response email was for sure illegal, but that's only that only cuts it if you can afford a lawyer and afford to not have a job for the year plus that the lawsuit takes, so they can count on being able to do it anyway. And guess what's worse? Did you know that most of these companies make you sign arbitration clauses, which means you don't even get to go to court. You have to sit down with a legal arbitrator, usually chosen by the company first, before you can go, before you can sue. So that makes the, 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 um, the, the uh that makes the process even longer did harassment after that happened instead of quitting i just stopped showing up to work i literally just abandoned that company and never went back wow. basically my point there is just wow you know i've had negative experiences in tech and and at games come lady kelgana says i was 20 hours away from a game development degree and i walked away this was back in 2012 the industry is so toxic i gave up on my ba i'm very sorry to hear that i'm really sorry companies i feel like i've largely been okay at the places that i've worked but i had negative experiences both at ign and at rooster teeth true uh true. either things that happened to me or to other people that i supported them through to the extent that this Activision, Activision Blizzard shit that like watching my Twitter timeline of people who don't know be like, oh my god, this is horrific. To me is like, this is just this fucking industry. It definitely is a very big bummer. Just whenever one of these stories comes out, it always hits. I feel like every woman I know who works in the games industry sort of hard because you're like, of course. And I can attest this. Um, I have a private that I use for my own use. I follow a lot of my uh, my close, close friends on my private. And on my private, when this story dropped, my entire timeline was friends that I have, women, femme friends that I have in the gaming industry saying that they couldn't handle it. Literally just being like, I'm done. I'm logging off. I can't, I can't do it. I can't tell you. I wish I could I wish I could accurately represent to you the suffering I've seen as just a second party to the game industry. I've never worked in the game industry. I've been a big gaming fan, but I've never worked in the games industry. But I know a lot of people who do. A lot of my friends work in the games industry, and I can tell you the the deep sadness and pain and the shared experiences that my friends who are women who work in the gaming industry have experienced would make you cry and that's why that is literally why i decided to cover this was because i saw their stories is it unique to the gaming industry uh it's uniquely bad in the gaming industry but this is not unique only to that entertainment has always entertainment has always had a problem with sexism and sexual uh, sexual assault and rape a huge problem as we know from the me too movement the me too movement was so big because it was so rife in the entertainment industry and there's a number of reasons for this, but one of them, and this is especially bad at Blizzard, by the way, which we're going to talk about inevitably more as this goes on, but at Blizzard, there is the idea, you know that Blizzard devs make less than others? Let's continue. Let's continue. 
course, that's that's what happened. Of course, somebody took their own life. Why is the culture perpetuated? Because it's very convenient for those who benefit from it. That's the truth. The simple truth is that those who benefit from this culture benefit a lot. They get to they get to uh, live their lives unrestricted with no consequences. They can take what they want. They can get what they want. They're making the big bucks, and they don't even got to do any work. They can push as the lawsuit outline outlaw, um, outlines, which we will explore in full detail as we go on. It was regular occurrence for uh, guys in cis white guys in positions of leadership at Blizzard and at other gaming companies, mind you. This isn't just Blizzard, but this is specifically focused on Blizzard today. To put all of their work onto their female coworkers and um and employees while they fuck around, and you're gonna see how bad it gets. Let's continue. Fucking sucks. Like, of course, there needs to be actionable change, and this lawsuit, I feel like, shines a light on this thing, but am I shocked or even surprised? No. Not even a little bit. No. It's a, I think, like, this culture of a lot of dudes who were nerds and then got a really cool job and then now think they're hot shit and deserve any of the women in their spaces. Like, the company I was talking about, there was a running bet for who could sleep with me first. I didn't sleep with any of them. But there was a running... Do you know how fucked that is? Do you know how fucked that is? Do you know how gross and dehumanizing that is to experience? Disgusting. Like, leaderboard within that office for which of the male employees would get to have sex with me. What the fuck? And keep in like, mind- That's the culture of these places on a global scale. They were like, well, we can. We just have to get a lot of drunk enough or like coerce her in the right way or just like Holy push it hard shit. enough or we'll see who can do it first. Let's like put bets on it. Like it was fucked. <laughs> like, yeah, I don't know. And and HR at any of these companies is generally not very helpful because they try to protect the company. I, at one company, um, I didn't want to give details of something that happened. I didn't feel comfortable doing so um, because even though something bad had happened, I was scared to get the person who did it in trouble super complicated um and they were like well we might have to fire you for obstructing company investigation then and i was like you're telling me a person who has dealt with something negative that i might get fired what <laughs> um it's just a fucking nightmare across the board it's basically my point here and i'm not surprised about the activision blizzard shit and it surprises me that anybody else is surprised and it's really sad and there are a lot of really great people in the industry but yeah the bro culture I think is what they call it thing is like super prevalent. If I were to ask anyone watching this of anything, it is to if you see something or you see someone doing shit like that, like, you know, know that A, if the women who are being hit on or whatever laugh, it can often be a sign of discomfort. That doesn't mean they're okay with it. Um, but if you see this shit and you see bros Nuts asks, would you agree that this is mostly men being ignorant of what consent is in general or something exclusive to the gaming industry? It's not being ignorant of consent. It's not giving a shit. They know what consent is. They just don't care. They've never, ever, ever had to have even the slightest pushback. And I'm not talking about punitive justice here. I'm not saying every one of these people needs to be thrown in jail, but they've never been able to have pushback because the environment is designed to punish any pushback that isn't compliance this is how dominant structures work being bros and being like who can fuck the, the, this girl first just please fucking say something it's so much harder for women to say something it's so hard it's hard on every scale it's also hard when it goes public because if it does then it's always being the victim she's a liar prove it she was asking for it well this is yep. how she looks yep. like that shit's so vicious just if you see a woman at your workplace being hit on, especially if it's by multiple men, I think that makes it a lot worse. It's a lot harder when there's a group of them. Just be like, maybe ask her if she's okay and tell these people to fuck off. <laughs> like, you have to help. If you also sit by the wayside and I'm like, oh, I'm uncomfortable, I do think you're contributing to the problem because... Capo says, two pieces of general advice. Listen up, everybody. Two pieces of general advice for anyone who's finding themselves in a similar situation. One... 
Check your state's recording laws. If you live in a one-party consent state, keep your phone recording audio in your pocket when you go to HR and save the recording. Two, if you need a lawyer, call your state bar association. You can find the number easily on Google. They can often help you find the right lawyer for your legal and financial situation. There are lawyers who will do this for free. It's not guaranteed, but there are places that have them. Phantom Queen May says, I'd go so far as to say they don't even want consent. They derive pleasure off of the violation. Well, that's possible as well. You're not the one who's at the height of discomfort. Will you say something? Be like, this isn't... I don't know that saying this isn't appropriate at the workplace is going to help. But may maybe even just a casual like, hey man, leave her alone. Fuck off. Don't you have a job to do? Like, just something dismissive. Because otherwise you can feel like you're going through this stuff completely alone. And it ends up at a lawsuit because nobody internally takes it seriously at all. That's my suggestion. An ongoing thing, not even remotely surprised, more surprised that other people are surprised. Also don't want like women to shy away from getting into the games industry, but do want to encourage any women who'd be watching the stream who want to. To <sighs> sometimes women see other women as competition, like know that you're stronger together. Like just true solidarity really solidarity and i also don't know that like boycotting these companies really helps like i feel like that hurts a lot of devs internally they're gonna make money no matter what i don't think i don't think that really helps i think it's i, I don't know what the solution for the public is when this shit happens it just is not letting it go pretty much everywhere in tech so yeah. Yep. If you see well, something, Xia Ross, something. if you have Please, that one, from the bottom of my heart. Please I don't know if I have that one. Fucking call people out when you right. see them being even a little bit creepy or too persistent. It's yes, so much harder to do if you're by yourself. But also, don't fucking tell people about it. That's a problem too. Is when people go like, like if I go to someone in confidence. I'm like this is happening. Can you help me? And then they go tell someone else, and then you have to deal with this like escalation of drama that you're like I this is something we talked about isn't this funny we talked about this specifically in the drama mama about jimmy Dore, didn't we does anybody remember my jimmy Dore drama mama where we talked about exactly this that women in workplaces are often reluctant because they're afraid that they won't be just listened to that their co-workers are going to try and fix the situation for them remember when anna kasparian said hey Chenk would have blown up and this would have turned into a giant thing. And then Chenk said, yeah, or Jenk said, yeah, I would have, I would have blown up. And that's my bad because I, I wasn't trustworthy enough to be engaged with. Kind of wild, huh? I didn't want that. I just wanted your help. You can't do that either. <laughs> Thank you, Xia Ross. Just try to support. This is the one I didn't have on my list. I don't think. Treated like shit, because I promise you, the amount of shit that women in games have to deal with, I mean, especially for women of color, but women in games in general, um, yep. to also every single day have to deal with, she doesn't even really like video games, she's in the industry for attention, she probably doesn't know anything about video games, the amount of fucking hurdles that you have to cross and shit that you have to deal with to stay, you have to love it ten times more than anyone else does. Otherwise, it just wouldn't be worth it. It's We've talked about this on Twitch too. It's not just game dev. It's not just the game companies. It's the entire culture around gaming is so pervaded in this shit. We've had to talk about this with regard to gaming streamers as well, haven't we? We've talked about that a lot on this channel. It's just fucking absurd. Anyway, no, most of the shit didn't happen to me. You, whoa, you, like, I haven't dealt with, like, a tremendous amount of terrible shit uh i don't feel like i have at least well i have had one very negative experience but and listen to listen to that i'm sorry i don't mean to 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 try and undercut the message here but listen to how look at how tough alana is alana just told us that that she was kissed against her consent that she had someone spit stuff in her mouth against her consent and she says that's not even the worst she's like i haven't even experienced all that bad I don't know. That sounds pretty goddamn bad. And that's considered not that bad? Um. 
don't want to say I'm strong because that dismisses other people. I also like generally don't care. Like I did have a boss who commented on my tits and said some other creepy shit. And I was just like, he's a pathetic old man. <laughs> who cares? Like it doesn't, I don't know. I feel like I'm so used to it. Anyway, just, um, please, please be actual allies, not people who just fucking tweet stuff. Please actually stick up for people. Don't just put shit on your Twitter timeline. That's that's my request there. Damn. Damn. That's pretty rough. So I wanted to watch that specifically because Alana Pierce is somebody that many, many people know. And we have now heard from Alana herself what she dealt with. And she considered that not even that bad. And I think we can all acknowledge that is very bad indeed. That is very bad very bad indeed let's watch another video that i found here this is a tiktok that was posted to the uh wow subreddit by a uh worker at blizzard so i'd like you to hear this all right we're gonna watch this together Look, I'm trying to be a positive person, so I, I don't like making posts like this. It's for my friends that I made while working at Blizzard Entertainment that I don't want to say anything at all. So if you know what's going on with Blizzard, you know they're being sued by California for a toxic environment that includes sexual harassment, among other things. And in their response, they said this does not represent who Blizzard is. Yes, it does. And it has for a long time. Since my first day back in 2012, I was sexually harassed and women have it way worse. One of my employees was told by a technical director to her face in front of witnesses during one of these cube crawls that absolutely do exist that he didn't like her because she wasn't giving him head. When an employee was sexually assaulted at a holiday party, we had to fight tooth and nail with HR to get them to take any action through which they victimized her and blamed her. Now we've got an employee who's taken her own life seemingly because of the treatment that she experienced at the hands of her leadership and her coworkers. Yeah. It's real. It's you. Be better. Wow. Like, it's just, uh... That's a lot. That's a lot to, uh... <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot to process, isn't it? And this is where we're going to talk about some of the stuff about this isn't just a new thing. This has been going on for a long time. This isn't... This isn't news. It's news to a lot of people who are not in the industry. It's news to a lot of the people who play these games because that's how these things work, right? You are distanced from whatever is going on and whatever goes into what you're making. And for the record, if you're out there and this does surprise you and you do feel surprised, you don't need to feel bad, okay? These things are concealed and kept under wraps for a reason. But the takeaway from this is that everybody everybody needs to be on the watch out for this we need to start learning how to push back together with solidarity against stuff like this seriously the trauma that comes with uh a vinay says the trauma that comes with this type of shit can make you lose so much time this shit enrages me i'm so sad for these people and mad for these people i am too and we have just barely begun Even oh, Goddess Trans Girl says, even the COD community called out Activision. You know you fucked up badly when even the COD community thinks you're reprehensible. Do you have a link to the COD one? I wasn't able... Uh, uh, earlier, I didn't even think of, of checking the COD community. But if you have a COD community post, I would love to check that. I would love to take a look at that. So now we are going to bring... Uh, we are going to go to this. I have opened up a entire wall of uh of of tweets that have been documented thankfully by the wow reddit which is not managed at all by blizzard it is a community subreddit they don't have any involvement and good on them for that good on them for that so let's look former blizzard entertainment uh employee we have this person Scrutstick was a game master, a senior game master, and a producer. Lit worked at the company for 13 years and 7 months, and they left in April of 2020. 
Okay, so that's who we're looking at right now. Stephanie Krutzik. Krutzik. I'm going to come out and say it. I was one of these women. My incident happened in Blizz in 2013 at BlizzCon. I didn't say anything officially until I decided to leave the company last year because of the name recognition and the fear of retaliation. I also have one other incidents described here and some not in several areas. It was wonderful to work. Sometimes it was wonderful to work there. Sometimes it wasn't. Most of my coworkers were wonderful, talented people who cared about quality games and some weren't. The problem was the lack of accountability. I want to reiterate that overall, the people who make up the teams at Blizzard are wonderful. They care about each other and their work and the games they make. These things can exist at the same time. It's been on a better path. I hope it keeps moving that way and that this helps. I will also say that this is the first time I've publicly said this name, and I still feel dread about the fact that I did. Still, it's really difficult to not delete this thread. Anyway, I credit Blizzard with pretty much everything good in my life, and with a lot of this as well. These are not conflicting concepts. They are motivations for more of the former and reducing slash removing the culprits of the latter. P.S. If you think this is just a Blizzard thing, you are mistaken. This is the industry, especially before 2015 or so. Also, a lot of wonderful people still work there, including my friends and family. Pulling support from them is not the answer. Demanding accountability from those who should be held accountable is. Support this, this lawsuit and the overhaul of how women are treated in the game industry. This is endemic to the industry. You're going to see this a lot. You're going to see this line a lot today, chat. And many of the offenders are working for other companies right now. Support the claim and show that women should be believed. Support the idea that this won't be tolerated in any company. But don't harass people who are just trying to make the games and make a living. This definitely isn't how I wanted to go viral or gain followers. But hey, please believe survivors and donate to R.I. R-A-I-N-N, which is a sexual assault survivor, um, uh, um, charity. And of course, this is the whole one. This is her story. So we're going to read this. This was, this was one of the people who, uh, who, she was one of the people who was affected by this particular item. Item 47. In a blatant example of the defendant, aka Blizzard, the defendant is Blizzard. In a blatant example of Blizzard's refusal to deal with the harasser because of his seniority position, Alex Afrasiabi, the former creative senior director of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment, that's a powerful position, was permitted to engage in blatant sexual harassment with little to no repercussions. During a company event, an annual convention called BlizzCon, Afrasiabi would hit on female employees, telling them he wanted to marry them, attempting to kiss them, and putting his arms around them. This was in plain view of other male employees, including supervisors, who had to intervene and pull him off of female employees. Other supervisors pulled him off physically of female employees. Holy fuck. Afra Siabi was so known to engage in harassment of females in his workplace that his work suite was nicknamed the Crosby Suite after alleged rapist Bill, Cro Bill Crosby. Bill Cosby. The Cosby. Right? Cosby, not Crosby. Cosby. The misspelling. Af Afra Siabi would also call females derogatory names at company events. Afra, Sa Afra Siabi's conduct was known to Blizzard Entertainment executives who took no effective remedial measures. J. Allen Brack, the president of Blizzard, allegedly had multiple conversations with Afra Siabi about his drinking and that he had been too friendly. Too friendly! Too friendly, everybody, towards female employees at company events, but only gave Afra Siabi a slap on the wrist. Verbal counseling. That's it. In response to these incidents, subsequently, Afra Siabi continued to make unwanted advances towards female employees, including grabbing a female employee's hand and inviting her to his hotel room and groping another woman. If we could have some. Here we go. I love what you've guys done with World of Warcraft. I love the fact that you have a lot of it's very really quiet, strong yeah. female characters. However, I was wondering if we could have some that don't look like they've stepped out of Victoria's Secrets catalog. <laughs> what do you mean? Wait, wait, wait. Which catalog would you like them to step out of? <laughs> <laughs> 
could, could you could you see Sylvanas looking any other way? <laughs> right. That's him. So we we feel you, and uh, we want to vary our female characters absolutely. Um, so yeah, we'll we'll pick different catalogs. <laughs> hey, uh, Alex, what uh, what catalog is that uh, torn female coming out of? <laughs> Not, not one you'd read. Yeah. <laughs> sexy, sexy cow business. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Some sort of agricultural. <laughs> wow. That's pretty nasty, isn't it? Let's move on to the next one. This is from Reign of Terra, who was a senior systems engineer for four years and one month. They left in January of 2019. Oh yeah, a really important thing. This isn't some special new thing that happened because of the Activision Blizzard merger. This is Blizzard culture. Don't give Blizzard yet another pass because it's fun to dunk on Bobby Kotick. This is what, again, this is what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about how this goes a lot deeper. Terrafield also made a response, which we now, now need to read. So, this right here is Mike Morheim. Mike Morheim is one of the OGs by the way, of Blizzard. Mike Morheim is one of the founders of Blizzard. This guy has been there since the beginning, since the 90s. This guy's been there from the very beginning. Now let's read his statement and then we'll have one of the responses, okay? My thoughts. Mike Morheim says, I have read the full complaint against Activision Blizzard and many other stories. It's all very disturbing and difficult to read. I am ashamed. It feels like everything I thought I stood for has been washed away. What's worse, but even more important, real people have been harmed, and some women had terrible experiences. I was at Blizzard for 28 years. During that time, I tried very hard to create an environment that was safe and welcoming for people of all genders and backgrounds. I knew that it was not perfect, but clearly we were far from that goal. The fact that so many women were mistreated and were not supported means we let them down. In addition, we did not succeed in making it feel safe for people to tell their truth. It is no consolation that other companies have faced similar challenges. I wanted us to be different, better. Harassment and discrimination exist. They are prevalent in our industry. Notice that this is the this is like the approved statement. And and in even in the approved sanitized statement, harassment and discrimination are prevalent in our industry. You think? It is the responsibility of leadership to keep all employees feeling safe, supported, and treating equitably, re equitably, regardless of gender and background. It is the responsibility of leadership to stamp out toxicity and harassment in any form across all levels of the company. To the Blizzard women who experienced any of, the, any of these things, I am extremely sorry that I failed you. I have a feeling that they probably wouldn't like to be referred to as Blizzard women. Just a bit of a, um, just a, bit of a weird step there. I realize that these are just words, but I wanted to acknowledge the women who had awful experiences. I hear you. I believe you. We see you. We hear you. Quite literally. And I am so sorry to have let you down. I want to hear your stories if you're willing to share them. As a leader in our industry, I can and will use my influence to help drive positive change and to combat misogyny, discrimination, and harassment wherever I can. I believe we can do better, and I believe the gaming industry can be a place where women and minorities are welcomed and included, supported, recognized, rewarded, and ultimately unimpeded from the opportunity to make the types of contributions that all of us join this industry to make. I want to, I want the mark I leave on this in industry to be something that we can all be proud of. But remember, guys, before you start to think, hey, that's kind of positive, this guy was the president and CEO of Blizzard. This guy was the founder. This guy was the boss of J. Allen Strack. The guy who we just found out only punished a guy who was serially sexually assaulting women, groping them, kissing them, not just hitting on them. We're not just talking about even that would have been bad enough, but this guy was serially assaulting people and J. Allen Brack gave him verbal counseling, and that is it. And we're not even, we haven't even, this is just the beginning. And here's a response. Hold on one second. 
Here's a response from Tara Fe- from Reign of Terra to the Mike Morheim. Ben Kilgore was being investigated for inappropriate conduct with female employees as early as 2016. Yet in May 2017, he was promoted from chief technology officer to chief development officer. How was that situation even allowed to occur? The women's council knew about the allegations. So that goes to show you, Mike knew. If the if their internal women's council knew, Mike knew. And they still promoted him. They gave him a promotion. A guy who was currently under investigation. Next, we are going to be reading a tweet from Cronin, a senior site reliability engineer who worked at Blizzard for two years and six months, leaving in May 2019. Something to keep in mind on the Activision Blizzard suit. It's only the incidents they know about. There are more. One high-level abuser was quietly shuffled out of the company without a word. I'm sure he wasn't the only one. We've been waiting for this to drop. Reign of Terror and I were both contacted about this. And here we go with some tweets from back in 2018 when they still worked there. Kayla Glover, QA, so Quality Assurance, StarCraft Esports, Overwatch League. Six years and two months is the next one. Kayla Glover. There's a lot I could add about my own experience, but I won't right here. Though I will say that while, while there are some abhorrent people that contributed to this, there were also advocates who were trying to do the right thing. So please don't harass individuals over this news. I'm glad that it's come out and hopefully we'll push for change in the correct direction because I want all my friends, all talented and wonderful people, still there to succeed without being in a toxic space. There's a lot I could add about my own experiences, but I won't hear. Competition manager, Blizzard Esports alumni. Really sad. And notice this, there were also advocates who always tried to do the right things. People have been fighting against this for a very long time and they haven't had success next alori Al alori various positions as a project manager six months or sorry six years and 10 months that's the next one alori it's been 2.5 years and i still carry a lot of pain from my time at blizzard i stayed too long seven years clinging to the blizzard label I'm finally at a company where I'm paid and treated fairly, and I want the same for all of my old teammates. Don't wait, ladies. You deserve more. <clears throat> I was only 20 when I interned at Blizzard, 21 when I joined full-time. I thought what I was experiencing was normal, that this was just the games industry. Even when I talked to peers, mentors, or HR, this is somebody... Just catch that. Catch the details here. This is somebody who had enough incidents in their time working there that they talked to peers, mentors, and HR themselves. The environment was normalized. HR literally told me, you're being a brat. Can you imagine going to your HR department about sexual harassment and being told that you're being a brat by your HR? Again, sickening. For so long, I thought I had to go with the flow to keep my job and get promoted. I only felt safe to push back once I had a title or pay that covered all my bills. So I made excuses to stay at the job because it was cool to work at Blizzard. I hope more women don't make my mistake. Seven years at Blizzard. Seven years. Next, Kyle That Kyle, social media content producer. For League for Overwatch League, one year and two months. I got into a lot of arguments with the frat bros at both Blizzard and Twitch. There's a reason I left both both places so quickly, which sucks because there were people at both who were grinding it out because they truly cared about where they worked and the products that they worked on. I mean, Blizzard was literally the top of the mountain for me. So when I found out that I hated the culture, I had a real crisis of faith about what to do next. It broke me for a while. I used to get in trouble because I wouldn't engage in the forum of open criticism that was the company Slack channel where everyone got to weigh in on every social media post that we made. People who didn't work in social got to tag us and critique us in front of the entire channel. Holy shit, that's terrible. 
I'd let them know that I what I thought of their critique and then leave the social media channel. And I was told, but the optics, but the optics, their critique was never constructive. One dude who had lots of thoughts about how he did things like I ran the community ba here back in 2008. So I know what I'm talking about. I can't even describe the vast difference between 2008 CM work and 2017 brand social media work. Also, quick reminder, be loyal to people, not companies. They don't give a shit about you. A company is never a family. The moment you have red in the column next to your name, you're gone, even if the company is profitable. The last thing, what I went through was not one-tenth as bad as what a woman or a person of color would have been through. For every loudmouth like me, there's someone afraid to speak because of retaliation, industry blackballing, or even litigation. Fortunately, I'm very stupid. I run my own business, so blackballing doesn't really matter. I have the money to fight litigation, and retaliation isn't a deterrent. Not everyone is so lucky. So for other people to speak up, it takes true courage and fortitude. I should clarify that tweets 3, 4, and 5 are about Twitch. I was firing these off while working, so I didn't contextualize all of it, which is my fault. Damn. Next, call me Questifer, game master and game designer, seven years and two months. Seven years and two months. Confession time. I have considered going to the press or a lawyer or both over the things that happened to me at Blizzard, but I always felt like it was just me misinterpreting things. I would always take the blame for what happened in the end. I would make excuses for them. I would write things off. But something about seeing this all play out, to see other women come forward, I'm beyond proud of them. It takes courage I have yet to muster. This isn't the Twitter thread where I dish. Sorry. This is the thread where I relate, broadly and deeply. If you said something, if you took action, if you silently endured but are feeling quietly vindicated, and even if this has never happened to you or anyone you know, you're brave, you matter, it's probably not in your head. Do you notice something that... Do you, so, we've read a couple of these, and there's a recurring trend, right? This idea of being silenced, of feeling like you can't speak up because you're in danger. That is how you create a rape culture. <clears throat> When you experience something this severe, it can be very hard to talk about it at all, let alone when you're faced with hostilities. It becomes increasingly difficult when there is hostility on all sides. That is a recurring theme that we're seeing here, that it's been ongoing, that there is a culture of silencing people who spoke out. And I want to get to some of the other stuff, but I want to, I want to focus first on the stories of those who are actually there. And then we're going to go and read the laundry list of events that actually happened to these people. And the reason we're doing it in that order is because these are people. These aren't just abstract blobs of text in a document. This happened to humans. This happened to people like you. Look, this is her, this is her personal Twitter. This is her personal fucking Twitter account. And here we have her on her, well, how many followers does, 2,000 followers, this person has like a third of my followers, and this person is talking about how scared they are to even mention the things that happened. Wild. And they followed up here. I wasn't certain I wanted to share this, but I think, I think I bad, I had better. I had better. During that meeting with Jab, when he pulled all the ladies of WoW into a room Ale after Alex Afrasiabi's Afris embarrassing verbal vomit. That's the one that we watched, by the way. I asked him a question. What does zero tolerance mean? He asked me if I thought nothing had happened to Alex. I'm sure he got talked to. I'm sure the tone was very serious. I'm certain that uh, J. Allen Brack, J Al Jab is J. Allen Brack. I'm certain J. Allen Brack was unequivocal in his denouncement, but he kept his job. He was allowed to continue leading women. Alex Frostwolf, PR writer, social media man manager, BlizzCon contest manager, five years, left in 2018. That's the next one we're going to be reading. Alex Frostwolf, I left Blizzard after my boss gaslit me so badly my hair started falling out. My profit sharing, which I relied on to make ends meet, was docked due to underperforming. And when I went to HR to fight it with proof against his claims, I was told, well, maybe you are underperforming. The fucked up part, I hated leaving. 
Blizzard was my dream job and I loved the work I did there and the, and the people that I worked with and still do to the point of almost returning. But the amount of people who still remain in management positions even after multiple accusations kept me away. Years later, during a studio visit to see some friends, I saw him and we made eye contact. I spent the next 10 minutes locked in the bathroom sobbing. I loved Blizzard, I truly did, but they employ predators in every sense and we've all internally been saying that for years. Listen to this. I loved Blizzard. I truly did. But they employ predators in every sense. And we've all been internally saying that for years. To anyone else who has been unfairly treated or made to feel lesser in their workplace because of their gender, age, race, or sexuality, I know how you feel and my DMs are always open. The work you do is value, value, valid and you have oh so much work worth. Now... This is part of this whole thing of passing off work onto others. Do you want to know a really, um, do you want to know a really effective way? Um, do you want to know a really effective way of getting somebody to do work for you? You make them, you threaten their job and you tell them they're constantly un underperforming no matter how much they do for you because they'll, because they need that job to pay their bills. They need that, that job to take care of their kids. They need that job to make sure that they can have a house. And so they're going to keep working harder. You And they keep working harder while you gaslight them. While you tell them you're not working hard enough. You're not working hard enough. That will drive someone crazy. And it clearly did. That will drive someone to the brink. And, right, and rightfully, they will be correct in feeling stress. They will be correct in feeling like they're being made to be crazy. This is Nalimor. Translator for the Spanish client, associate community manager, seven years, six months. They left in November of 2020. Reading over the legal docs was a huge mistake. I was reached out for this while I was still there, and I remember being so scared to speak about it. I emailed the contact asking if I was legally required to speak to them about my experience. I spoke about my experience twice. Both men, neither one believed me. The second time I learned that not every voice matters. That is so fucking painful to read. Striped Kidder says, I know that it's not directly related, but I think uh, Noodle's video on Crunch makes a point that I can see being applied here. You don't want to be that guy or that girl, so you stick it out. You don't want to be the reason why more women get harassed more. Yep. Yep. This is that, this is that systemic critique that we look for. We look at the workplace and we see how the machinery works. The machinery that shames you if you speak out about it so that you don't speak out. And then nobody speaks out and then everybody's quiet. I spent years thinking that this was, that it was me. You hear how many times we've heard that? Do you hear how many times, how, I think every, almost every single person that we've read so far, or nearly every single one, not every single one, but nearly every one has mentioned that. These types of environments make you feel like you're the one to blame. <clears throat> I spent years thinking it was me, that I had done something to deserve that, that I wasn't good enough. Because when I told someone I considered a friend, they brushed me aside. I was laughing just a few hours ago, and now I can't stop crying. It wasn't me. Stop hiring these men. I promise you, none of them are worth the pain they have inflicted on others. Also, if one more dude tells me, but he has been great to me, I will lose it. That's part of the problem. Yes, this is part of the problem. See, they'll be, uh, these fucking rapists will be nice to other men. Because that lets them keep up a pretty face. Okay, we're going to go to the next one now. This is Caden House, Game Master, Assistant Community Manager, three years, one month, April 2019. I wish I could say I was shocked, surprised, or didn't know things. It's not hard to not be a fucking creep, to not harass people. Hold your peers accountable. I promise you it's not as hard as you think it might be. I wish I could say I was shocked, surprised. There you go, another person echoing the same sentiment that Alana did. This is a community ma current community manager at EA.
We're going to open up a couple more of these. We got a lot more to go through. The next one is going to be share the dev. Oh, here we go. We got this one has extra content, I think. Share Scarlet. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Did I miss this one? Hold on. Share Scarlet. Okay, here we go. Share Scarlet. Here we go. Here we go. This is certainly long overdue. Oh, sorry. I need to read off for details. Share the dev. Software engineer. Worked at Blizzard for one year and one month in August and left in August of 2016. So this person was working at 2015 during 2015. This is certainly long overdue, referring to the lawsuit. I would be hard-pressed to find someone that wasn't witness to sex in the game lounges, cocaine in the bathrooms during a cube crawl, or a woman who wasn't sexually harassed at least once. I am so proud of these women. Blizzard has claimed that the DFEH report is false, misleading, or irresponsible. I can tell you that I knew I was I knew what was going to be in this report before I even read it, because during my time there, I was only there for a year. I witnessed all of these things. Name names. On the phone with old co co-workers crying in validation right now. Isn't that wild that these people are calling each other? What is a cube crawl? We're going to get into that. We're going to get into that. In fact, you know what? I think I can bring that up. Let's do it. Let's read about that now. This is a good opportunity for us to bring up the cube crawl so that we all know, because this has been refu uh, re uh, referred to a couple of times, and I really think you ought to know what a cube crawl is. So let's bring up the cube crawl, shall we? Let's, let's read what a cube crawl is. Defendants have also, that's Blizzard. Blizzard has fostered a pervasive frat boy workplace that continues to thrive. In the office, women are subjected to cube crawls in which male employees drink copious amounts of alcohol as they crawl their way through various cubicles in the office and often engage in inappropriate behavior towards female employees. Male employees proudly come into work hungover, play video games for long periods of time during work while delegating their responsibilities to female employees, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk openly about female bodies, and joke about rape. Unsurprisingly, Blizzard's frat boy culture is a breeding ground for harassment and discrimination against women. Female employees are subjected to constant sexual harassment, including having to continually fend off unwanted sexual con comments and physical advances by their male co-workers and supervisors while and being groped at the cube crawls and other company events. High-ranking executives and creators engage in blatant sexual harassment without repercussions. In a particularly tragic example, content warning here, a female employee committed suicide during a business trip with a male supervisor who had brought butt plugs and lubricant with him on the business trip. Defendants continually c condone the quid pro quo and hostile work environments. The message has not been lost on their employees. So that's a cube crawl, everybody. And mind you, notice, do you remember who can, you know that multiple separate people who've worked at the company at different points have confirmed explicitly the cube crawls. Remember the TikTok we watched just a few minutes ago? That guy confirmed the cube crawls are real. Can you imagine you put yourself in that foot, in, in, in these women's foot uh, shoes for just a second, okay? Walk in their footsteps for just a second, okay? Sit there, and I want you to imagine for just a second, I'm very sorry to make you go through this, uh, you know, to go through this, but I want you to imagine you're working on some art, maybe you got your stylus, and all of a sudden, a group of drunk dudes, a bunch of, dr a bunch of drunk WoW devs comes over to you, starts, walk, just walks into your cubicle, disrupts your work, that they're making you do while they do nothing. And then they touch you against your will. Maybe they joke about raping you. Maybe they joke about how they would uh, love to kiss you. And they move closer to you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because you already know that if you speak up about it, you're out of there. Or worse, you'll be targeted further. And you might be working your fucking ass off every single day. And you're not going to get promoted. 
because one of the people who fucking groped you is going to be promoted instead. I just want you to just put yourself, try to put yourself in the position. So there's the cube crawls. Watching men in power be rewarded over and over again over the last seven years, being blacklisted after publicly reporting on my own harassment and revenge porn hoarding by a community moderator. Their names being in this report, it means everything. I want justice for all of us. Former CTO of Blizzard isn't named. It's Ben Kilgore. And rush to fire, file inaccurate information is a wild take from Activision given that I know for a fact that some of these exact things were reported years ago to an external authority and that this has been building for years. I can tell you that myself and others filed things about this years ago. Years. Don't worry. We'll get there, Exia Ross. I know. We'll get there. And this is a this is Cher Scarlett, the person we just read, responding to former CEO and founder Mike Morheim. Yeah, you're all, yeah, Posadas John brings up a good point. You'd also be physically stuck in the cube since cubicles only have one entrance usually. Horrible. Everything about this is designed to break down your ability to resist. It's coercive. Talking responsibility, taking responsibility and apologizing for your role in this is paramount, Mike, and I really appreciate it. When things got really bad in Battle.net, many of us felt abandoned by you. And what's worse, when I was threatened with physical harm and panic CC'd you about it, I was later reprimanded for doing that, completely ignoring how terrified I was that my trying to save someone's life had somehow put my job in jeopardy and that I was going to be assaulted at a work event because of it. It felt like I was never given any grace. Despite so, so many men in leadership being repeatedly excused for their behavior and often being made to feel that the sexual harassment was totally normal and not even that bad, or even a compliment because of how normalized it was at Battle.net and WoW. I think back specifically to how many women Afrasiabi harassed and assaulted, myself included, and how many people were traumatized by Britain Bre Becker, the toxic environment that Pierce's EA had for so many years. It's hard for me to think that you couldn't have enabled it. Damn. Damn. Listen to that right there. This is the fucking deets. Remember when I said that Mike knew? He fucking knew. He was CC'd directly and didn't do anything. He didn't do anything. As hard as this is, and knowing that I'll never work in games again, Mike was directly responsible for the chain reaction of events that got me nearly fired for CCing him about Tia Zimmerman, yeah, Tia Zimmerman threatening me with violence for contacting emergency dispatch when she threatened suicide. While he didn't tell anyone to do it, he was the leader of the company and made comments about how, how this was causing problems for the company and that things need to be taken care of immediately, which was interpreted as fire share. My immediate supervisor put his job on the line for me and as a result, the compromise was to label me as a low performer and cut my bonus and my pay. In Listen to that. For speaking up, you get labeled as a low performer even though you're performing. Disgusting. Disgusting. Don't tell me you wanted us to come to you. I came to you and you destroyed my self-worth. No one should have the power to destroy someone's career because they are annoyed in a high-stress situ situation. Not the CEO. Not even the CEO. Next is Ona Lark. Producer, program manager, senior program manager, senior project manager. 11 years and 7 months. 11 years and 7 months. They left this year, by the way. I'm self-censoring tonight because I'm always fucking self-censoring when this topic comes up. But yeah, I spent 10 years trying to break through that particular boys club. But when you allow that behavior, it has a knock-on effect. Believe women. 10 years of enduring that shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. And why did I throw myself over and over against the wall? Because I fucking loved Blizzard. My dream company. I met a lot of great people there. I learned a lot and I have moved on. Finally, I am so proud to know Skrutsik and not just because she is also in the state sacred Stephanie club. If I'd known I'd, if I, and if I'd known I'd have, fucking flipped a thousand tables for her. 
Scrut, uh, Scrut, Sti Scrut Sick was the one that we first bought. That was the first one. The link to the Reddit post is right here. Next. Jellers42, a technical writer for customer support and service technologies. Six years working in Blizzard's customer support. So another thing you'll notice, another thing I want to bring attention to. You notice that this is, that so far we've had people from basically every division. Almost every single division of Blizzard is implicated in this. It's a company-wide problem. It's not just one guy. There is a culture of rape. This is why we use the term rape culture. So here we go. J. Ellers, 42. One time in a sensitivity training class, a scenario was presented where a trans femme employee asked others not to use you guys in a meeting. Several people immediately started making jokes and acting, acting faux offended that they were called out in said scenario. This, was, this includes the sensitivity teacher a woman and another woman whose defense was people have called me a guy before because of my short hair and it didn't bother me. We also had people leave comments on internal posts about pride asking if we'd have a straight pride day. Oh, and I saw several men get all puff chested and defensive about talking about taking inclusivity and sensitive t sensitivity training. Yeah, these people weren't even willing to take basic trainings, milk toast trainings. I've never treated a female like that, so why do I need the training? And this was from a person who definitely fit in the frat boy culture meme. It's all small things, but at this point, it's really death by a thousand cuts. Let's continue. Next, Riot Ashikandi, community manager for three years who left the company in October of 2018. Riot Ashikandi now works for Riot Games. I witnessed all of this and more happen to many of my female colleagues when I was at Blizzard. Numerous cases of discrimination and harassment that were swept under the rug. We were told that problematic people were too senior to do anything about. Some things never change. I've always tried to be a shoulder and an ally where I could, and I know there's still great people at the company who are fighting hard for change. I wish all of them the best in working through what's likely to be a tough time. It is a tough time. Blizzard seems to be in the middle of a reckoning. One of their core mottos is learn and grow. I think it's time they take that one seriously. Ooh. Three, in three years, this guy witnessed these things, by the way. And more. That is in alignment with other people who said there's a whole lot more that's not yet been discussed. We know that's the case. It's always the case. Always the case with these types of cases. What is on the surface is only the beginning. Next, we are going to be looking at Dainty, associate community manager, community manager for six years and eight months, left in April of 2020. Very recently. Here we go. This is Dainty. I don't have the emotional bandwidth right now to discuss my own history at Blizzard. I'm still proud of the work I did there, and I have more good memories than bad, but it's a long, long time coming. All my love to those who found the immeasurable strength to come forward. And here we have Krutzik, seeing a, an entire section dedicated to one of my abusers and seeing the descriptions in other sections outlining the exact same things I experienced to other people, is the implication here, was weirdly cathartic, realization that I wasn't alone that whole time. None of us were ever alone. We were just trained to keep quiet and actively fight each other about it, often to gaslight each other and ourselves. The thing I hate most is that I fell for it in so many ways. This is what I was talking about. Again. A again. Do you see? I said this at the very beginning, before we even read these, that this would be a recurring theme. That these sorts of things are perpetuated by cultures that break solidarity, that keep people quiet. People being quiet about their problems is essential for these fuckers to maintain this type of stuff. Next one, Ashleful, the EU community team. Okay, so now we're expanding over to the EU team. Again, a culture of rape. A culture of rape. Four years and two months having left in November of 2019. As I'm in the process of being laid off, 
I'm wary of commenting on the news, but what I will say is that this has been a long time coming. I shared my own story last year, and I have friends who've been victims of much worse. Listen to them if they step forward. Learn and be better. There we have it again. I'm in the process of being laid off. I'm wary of commenting on the news. Every single one of these people that we've read so far, every single one has, rec has acknowledged that they felt terror at the idea of losing their job. This is, again, we're going to see a lot of the same themes. I might, re re you know, repeat myself a little bit here and there, but I think it's very important. Next, we have Sh uh, Shana, Shana Chanel, a game master who worked as a game master for two years and one month, having left in July 2017. I've been openly discussing the discrimination I received during my employment at Blizzard for a few years now, even coming out about the harassment that was met with HR leads telling me it is a privilege to work here. I, we, never had a voice. Now we have a voice. Set aside your love for the company's products and the fictional universe for a moment and consider this. I witnessed my female colleagues, colleagues being demoted for pregnancies and female health-related concerns because of their inability to fulfill the requirements of a job but it's a privilege to work there i watched as my partner at the time received higher pay increases than myself while we performed at nearly identical paces statistically and continued to miss out as i took on roles of becoming a liaison for interdepartment communication purposes which helped us grow as a team the women who worked in hr were often spoken about in crude manners by male employees and upper management, with comments like they only have their roles because of how fuckable they appear to be, as women in general were often discredited for their skills in similar ways. An actual manager of mine and a manager of another team would often stand by their desk and gossip, once commenting that certain female employees must be on their period because of how frequently they got up to use the restroom. That is so fucking creepy. I mean, of course, that's like a drop in the bucket in comparison to everything else. But imagine look, imagine just monitoring your female co-workers' fucking bathroom time. Jesus Christ. A manager from another team once reached out to me privately to ask me which porn sites I preferred to visit and what type of content I most frequently viewed, adding that I was an attractive lady who must be into freaky stuff. Male colleagues were allowed to openly discuss in Jabber, our internal chat system, the appearances of female employees. During a catered holiday shift, one woman in particular was said to need multiple employee meals because of her size. She was in the group chat in which that was said. During a holiday party, a manager of mine invited me and my at-the-time partner back to his hotel room party where upper-level management were hanging out. When my partner was not in the room, I was offered drugs to help me get in the mood since i wasn't having enough fun when i originally received the, this letter referring to the letter for the lawsuit a while back i was afraid to come out with these experiences as that was a very dark time for me now seeing the stories being shared by my former female colleagues i feel supported enough to speak out on these experiences and now she has a picture of her letter I will continue to play the games that myself and many other re remarkable women contributed to. Our work should not be overshadowed by the disgusting actions of the men we worked alongside. See what I was saying? These artists literally poured their life and soul into it. The problem is not the product. The problem is the people who are making the money off of it. The people who sit at the top and protect their buddies. That's who we have a problem with. I hope these stories can reach and empower other women to do the same and share their experiences working for this company. I felt alone and I minimized my pain for a long time. I hope nobody else has to do that anymore. This is our time to speak. And again, I'm going to keep doing this, minimizing their own pain. You see, that's how gaslighting works. When you deal with an environment and individuals who are gaslighting you, they want you to think that it's all in your fucking head. And ev almost every single one of these women has expressed feeling that exact same thing. Expressing that they felt like they, that there was something wrong with them. 
We are now going to be reading the story of It's Lashes, community manager for three years who left in 2019. Bethany Hulse, a.k.a. It's Lashes. Having to relive trauma last night this morning was not what I expected. Sadly, those of us with these experiences carry this with us for the rest of our lives. Listen to women and minorities. Believe women and minorities. This happens in every industry and we need change. True. This person used to work at Walt Disney, used to work at G at NVIDIA. Still got a lot to go, and there might be more by the time we get to the end. Keep in mind, this is being actively updated. <clears throat> Let me open. Now, we continue with Rachel Day FX, a QA intern, a technical artist, and a senior FX artist. Nine years and four months. An FX artist. This is so... Oh, my goodness. When the Riot article came out, some of my male co-workers at Blizzard came to me to ask if this if it was this bad where we worked too. Surely we were the good guys, they assumed. We had a very deep talk about the reality of being a woman in games. I hope it sank in. This is systemic. My hope is that bringing all of these things to light, it will create real change. I fear these articles will keep women from joining the industry when it so desperately needs them. Be the change you want to see, gentlemen. I know many of you are outraged as well. And here's someone else. I was scolded by HR after creating the Women at Blizzard mailing list because a gender-specific mailing list is not allowed. They had to be directed to read the list description in which it said it was for anyone interested in the challenges of being a woman at Blizzard or in games. That was a good list. A lot of positive changes came from having a place to talk together without with our male coworkers listening and participating about these issues and more. Again. What, nine years for her? Nine years Rachel was there. Nine years. Let's continue. Pedro the Dagger, game designer and senior game designer, seven years and one month, left in February of 2019. So Pedro the Dagger. Also, just like, and this is not to let anyone off the hook, quite the opposite. This isn't just a Blizzard issue. This isn't a WoW issue. Unsub if you really want to or don't, but don't confuse that with making a difference. Because in my experience, this is a culture issue, not a studio issue. I'm two for two in mainstream gaming workplaces for having powerful men outed as abusers, and I'm sure many other folks had a similar experience. Seven years. BK Krusko, associate software engineer, software engineer. Three years, six months, left in October of 2019. Oh, this is a big thread. I had this one saved because this one was a, this one's been updated today. During my time at Blizzard, I experienced sexual harassment from multiple male leads. Explicit prescript descriptions of sex acts they wanted to perform on me, propositioning my wife and I for sex and back rubs. It goes on. This often occurred in front of my other coworkers who said nothing. Going to HR wasn't an option. You only went to HR if you wanted your story to be immediately shared throughout the entire studio. How many people have said that? How many people have come forward and said that the moment you go to HR, it would be shared? You would be shamed for it. On the handful of occasions where I tried to talk to somebody about this, I was never taken seriously. Boys will be boys, they say. I'm sure they're just joking. Sexual harassment isn't funny. I just wanted to make great games. So I sucked it up. I let it continue and just tried to ignore it as best I could. This wasn't worse, worse, worth risking my career over, I would tell myself. This remains one of my biggest regrets. I knew the more I put up with it, the more I enabled them to act this way towards others. I'm sure more people were hurt because of my inaction. I'm struggling with whether now is the right time to share this. The last thing I want to do is divert attention away from the women in this industry whose voices are rightly being amplified. But the culture at Blizzard was to toxic and it impacted many, many people. We need to do better. It is the right time, my friend. It is it is the right time. You are not taking away by sharing. You are solidarity strengthens us. Solidarity, solidarity, solidarity. Next. Ember Firehair, game designer, three years, nine months. Resigned last week. Resigned last week. I've been trying to compose a tweet for two days, so here it goes. Side note, I'm not retweeting much, but everyone else is. At this point, it's all just noise. All I have to offer is a line from my goodbye email. I am and will remain a fan of WoW and Team 2. 
I hope I always get to work with so many extremely skilled developers and kind people, especially the ladies on that team. The sheer amount of talent paired with the endless joy and friendship. My favorite thing was that anytime someone had a problem, the phrase was, how can I help? Support and validation and so much in such a simple phrase. And it helped. I wish I could give them all hugs and support today. Instead, they get a weak tweet and some silly gifts. Next, Aludi Aludiana IRL, QA analyst, four years, nine months, left in January of 2016. Let's go. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Well, this one might be gone. Well, these ones are gone. We don't get to see these. Okay. Next, B Doodles, associate game art producer, art outsourcing slash art producer. Four years, nine months, left in May of 2018. One of the best managers I had there, if, however, short-lived. He was pushed out quick for standing up for the people that were being mistreated and harassed. This is the TikTok we watched earlier, by the way. This is the TikTok we watched earlier. He was harassed himself, just like many other men, marginalized groups, LGBTQIA+, and other uh, black and indigenous people of color. Believe us. He was the only one who protected me while I was there, says Eva Dean. Eva Dean uh, doesn't have their stuff listed yet. They might. He was the only one who protected me while I was there, even when things were just too far over his head. He at least found ways to mitigate them at great personal cost. Immediately after he got pushed out, things went straight to nightmarish. Also, I'm crying right now. Wow, I didn't expect that to hit me so hard. He's one of the people I really and truly miss, and I wish I could make it up to him for how everything went for everything he went through just to stand up for me and many others. So now we have more context for this. Look, I'm trying to be a positive person, so I, I don't like making posts like this. Let's watch it again. It's for my friends that I made again. while We're working at Blizzard Entertainment that I don't want to say anything at all. So if you know what's going on with Blizzard, you know they're being sued by California for a toxic environment that includes sexual harassment, among other things. And in their response, they said this does not represent who Blizzard is. Yes, it does. And it has for a long time. Since my first day back in 2012, I was sexually harassed and women have it way worse. 2012. One of my employees was told by a technical director to her face in front of witnesses during one of these cube crawls that absolutely do exist that he didn't like her because she wasn't giving him head. When an employee was sexually assaulted at a holiday party, we had to fight tooth and nail with HR to get them to take any action through which they victimized her and blamed her. Now we've got an employee who's taken her own life, seemingly because of the treatment that she experienced at the hands of her leadership and her coworkers. Yeah, it's real. It's you. Be better. Game Dev Connie. Quality Assurance, Customer Service, Receptionist, EA, Producer. Seven years, 11 months. Former Marine and Combat Vet right there. He's on YouTube as well. Wow, interesting. Seven years, 11 months. This person left in July 2011. So keep in mind, this person had, was, this is, this is one of the earliest worker, one of the people who was there a long time ago. This is going to be very insightful, I imagine. Here. This is a response to what we read earlier by Mike Morheim. While I appreciate this, Mike, I also know there was no way you didn't know how toxic, for example, the two Robs were. I was there and I know you knew on some level, but in the end, it didn't. we didn't matter to you. I've spent the better part of 10 years recovering from my time working at Blizzard. Remember, this person worked at, worked, this person worked here for seven years and 11 months. They went from a QA to customer service and then later became a producer. They left in 2011. And they're still, and they're still saying this. 10 years recovering from my time working at Blizzard. Someone asked me what I thought of Dreamhaven and their message about creating a diverse place. And I responded, how could I believe that when you tolerated what went on at Blizzard? You filled the ranks with old guard taken from Blizzard. People who talked about the golden age of Blizzard that coincided with an era where so many harmful things happened. I left and I have become a successful game designer in my own right. My last ship title is winning awards left and right, but at Blizzard, I was told to stay in my lane. I didn't have the 
instincts to be a designer. I was running design council, production council, engineering council, and yet apparently I didn't make the cut to be an AP. Didn't make the cut. Don't you ever wonder why the EAs had to be transferred into other roles? I wanted so much to apply my creative passion towards my dream studio and a place I loved and had pretty much grown up at. I don't know how to explain the heartbreak upon realizing I was never going to be given that chance at Blizzard. Oh my god. Ugh. I am so proud of my career and how far I've come since I left Blizzard in 2011. I could have shined for Blizzard, but you and all the others are responsible for driving me and countless others are out. I hope this keeps you awake at night. I hope you at least have as many bad days as I did. You let abusive people stay where they were for far too long and I think you deserve a little anguish. Wow. Yes, there was a mass exodus. It's to the Dream Haven, Mike, Mike Morheim's new company. And there's been multiple, yeah. Executive assistant, AP equals associate producer. Yep. <clears throat> Here's another person weighing in. Smaller account. Used to work for Blizzard. QA engineer. I feel this. I got rejected 13 times from WoW for associate game designer, but I was told I was doing really well on my design TAs, but no actual feedback on my performance. I watched other employees have mentorships and get positions with a year. Within a year, I was trying for five years. It broke me and I haven't worked, wor worked on much for personal stuff since I left. It's been a major thing I talk about in therapy. And then this poster replies, this person who worked there for 11 years replies, it took me years to find my voice and my confidence and years of therapy. Much help to you and sincere, sincerely wish you healing and kindness. You see how this, the repercussions of this actions are ridiculous. And this is something else that I need to talk about. Because we talk frequently about why these spaces don't have a whole lot of women in them. Why it's like 1 to 10 ratios in a lot of cases. At Blizzard, it's uh, it's 2 out of every 10. T only 20% of their staff is women. And this is why. This is why. This is exactly why. Because you go there and you have to tough through things that ruin your life. That ruin your ability to create. They ruin your artistic motivation. Unbelievable. Let's continue. We have more to go for. So much more to go through. I, I warned you all, this is going to be a long one. Still going to be long. We got a bit, bit further to go. Next. <clears throat> Aneri. User interface designer. Two years, eight months. So this is in the UI team. Okay? They left in August 2008. 2008 This is a response from my this is a response to Mike Morheim's statement. Two men's went two men's bathrooms on the second floor at 33 Theory and pregnant women were forced to walk up and downstairs to use the restroom. Fighting with HR over a space to pump, meaning for when you're lactating, when you need to feed your baby. Female managers made interim instead of full managers. It's been going on since the start. This has been here since the start. Female managers made interim instead of full managers. That's so terrible. Oh, God, that's terrible. Next, Ender's Courage. Quality Assurance Analyst, Legacy Mobile Project Lead, Diablo 3 Assistant Project Lead in QA, Producer, Program Manager, Lead Program Manager. This... Look at these positions. Look at this fucking resume. Ten years, five months. Kevin Carter. Once again, this is in response to Mike Morheim. This is a response to Reign of Terror, who we read earlier. I have a lot of feels feelings about Ben, Ben Kilgore. I have a lot of feelings about Ben Kilgore and his subordinates, my bosses, from my years at Battle.net. There were many abuses, both perpetuated and explained away. You'll notice Ben Kilgore, in charge of all game and tech teams, left Blizzard without a peep. Oh, and my boss was Andy Simmons and his boss, Ben Direct, was Aaron Hartwell. Four years later and a world of success later, I still get cold sweats thinking about them. Holy shit. I still get cold sweats thinking about them. This is, look at this, 
10 years and five months on all of these positions describes his memories of this person as getting cold sweats. Sweats. That's how bad it is. That's how fucked up it is. Next, Olivia Grace, profit project manager, one year, five months, left in July of 2016. All of the bad shit that I and so many other women experienced was on Morheim's watch. Nobody in leadership is blameless, especially not the person in charge of it all, when all the bad shit in that lawsuit was actually happening. Yeah, that's right. When all of this happened was under Mike Morheim, was when Mike Morheim was the CEO. Remember that. Not saying there aren't problems now, I left five years ago. Nor am I saying that J. Allen Brack is doing enough, nor that A. B. or nor that J. Allen Brack is an improvement. But come on, people. Who was running the show in 2010? You gotta take off those rose-colored glasses. This is a pretty severe, uh, you know, denouncement. Condemnation. Kiato. Associate software engineer, software engineer, both corporate applications, software engineer on Hearthstone, software engineer on an unannounced project. Five years, seven months. They left in December of 2020. I have been sexually harassed at Blizzard. I've had my mental illnesses and narcolepsy used against me. I've been gaslit. Truthfully, I conveyed my entire experience directly to Blizzard leadership and HR across many disciplines, teams, and orgs many times throughout my years there. The only difference I ever saw was more and more of my friends leaving and seeing less and less women and inclusive supporters on the teams. God. Years of dealing with this. And this is somebody, this is, this is somebody who tried many times. Next. Hadid Jabi, FX artist on Hearthstone, senior VFX artist one on Hearthstone, lead VFX artist on Hearthstone, senior VFX artist on an unannounced project, four years and eight months, left in August of 2020, right in the dead center. These, a lot of people left in the middle of the pandemic. This shit sounds like a filter that lets the shittiest people go to the top. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like... If you have abusers at the top, they're going to promote abusers so that they have a wall of defenses around them so that it builds a culture because the culture protects them. That's the point. That's the point. They look out for each other. They have to be challenged with solidarity. You know the person who got that position after this person squ quit? They've been silent on that? Well... There's probably a reason for that. There's probably a reason why they're silent on it. Here we go. So this is uh, Hadid Jabi, I think, right? No, no, no. Wait, where did that one go? Did I miss that one? Here we go. Hadid Jabi. Here we go. Hadija. I went to HR several times only after checking with others, men and women, that I wasn't crazy or alone in my experience. Again, again, the gaslighting. Often, these men had multiple similar reports against them. Every time but once, HR shrugged it off. The one time they didn't was when my lead reported it on my behalf. It was th That was also the time HR named me to the man who was being aggressively condescending only to me and the one woman he interacted with, leading to him physically cornering me from behind in an empty office while visibly upset to ask about my report to HR. Yeah, we watched that one early, Shalune. Holy fuck. Don't blame the people who didn't feel safe going to HR and are speaking up now. Do not blame those who did, were ignored or punished, and are speaking up again. HR has failed us again and again. It needs just as much of an overhaul as the rest of the industry. Four years, four, four years, eight months. Next, Rinny Wee, lead game master, support information team manager, community manager for EU. Nine years five months, having left in April of 2014. They, this person that we're about to read, this person we're about to read was at the company a year after, a year after WoW launched. 2005 is when they started. They left in 2014. Just keep that in mind. Keep that in mind as we read this. There's a reason I left. Hashtag Blizzard. 
One of those reasons has slinked off of social media like a coward. And now Danny Bat, five years, three months, leaving in August 2014, and they wrote a lot. So we're going to go through these, and we have more to go through after this, okay? So here we go. There were other kinds of discrimination in the Austin Blizzard office. Don Rudy of the Latin American team, my former boss, so this was a what-the-fuck moment for me. Miles Trumbull, who was called out on Reddit. Let's take a look. After Blank came back from Blank, left with Blank and took my Blank took my blank leave. Don Rudy called her into his office to talk shit about how, how shitty of a senior I was. Oh my goodness. She had a postpartum depression and Don was condescending to her. He would also use the phrase pregnancy brain towards her. Pregnancy brain. What the fuck? In 2014, my team manager, boss's boss, harassed me daily while I was pregnant. He would write me up for using the restroom to pee at eight or nine months pregnant, claiming I was outside my allotted breaks and adherence met metric. Every day I'd come to work being told that I might be th that might be the day that I got fired. At the time, I was the top stack ranked GM for productivity, number of completed tickets, and top five to ten for customer satisfaction survey results. I'd waver between the overall number one or number two ranked game master they had at the time. I ended up just never drinking at work and landed in the ER... Uh, due to dehydration. My direct supervisor used to like to sneak up behind me and grab my sides or shoulders and yell to scare me. I'm very jumpy and I would always scream. He'd laugh at me and tell me to chill out when I begged him to stop. When I complained to my team manager, same one as above, he gave me an essay written by some Harvard Business School professor about being my direct... Uh, sorry, about... Uh, where was this? He gave me an essay written by some Harvard Business School professor about being too sensitive to criticism. I was made to read it at home and then sit in a ro room alone with the two men explaining what I had learned from it and how I should stop complaining about the touching going forward. I spent many lunch, lunch hours bawling alone in my car. This is absurdly evil. This is absurdly evil and corroborated. This shit is corroborated. I still can't drive by the Austin building without almost barfing. If low-level CS management behaved this way, I can't even imagine how the bigwigs in California asked. Fuck you, Miles. I hope you rot in hell. And here's the second one. An additional comment about Don Rudy, the team manager within Latin America. This man is a father himself, and I can't imagine the type of abuse he puts his wife through. Pregnancy brain was the term he used. This is a separate conversation. Pregnancy brain was the term he used for a decision made by a higher ranking manager with whom he disagreed, just as often as it was used for his subordinates. I was shocked when he told me he had a girlfriend, even more so when he said he felt forced to marry her because they'd been together for so long and it was what she was expecting. I have a very strong negative feelings for that man. And we're not done. Danny's got more. Harassment was not limited to the men, even though most of the complaints were against men. Maggie Olson of the Austin office targeted several women who were her employees. I have her blocked, so I missed that. But yeah, Maggie Olson was one of the harassers at Blizzard. She sucks. She has the audacity to say there are two sides, or two perspectives. And her sexual her, her, uh, harassment regarding my boobs, and how I wouldn't move up because I was the I was only there because of cleavage. Oh my fucking god. Yeah, if she's ever stuck in the middle of the wood of the road, I wouldn't apply brakes. Yeah, ask blank about it. I was yelling very loudly to others because I wanted everyone to know that if that she had been doing this a long time. She uh blank said so at the time, then I wasn't going to sit there and take those meetings that talked about how I should cover up my tits or how I wasn't strong enough to take on getting past temp. She also purposely taught me that uh shit that was outdated and they weren't doing anymore. Sorry, venting because I need to post. Uh thanks Lamau and nice to talk to you. Holy fuck, she said the same thing about blank going nowhere because of her cleavage. Brian Fish asked me once in work chat how much would I would charge him for an ONS. ONS. What's an ONS? I actually don't know that term. What's that term? Does anybody know what that term? I, I'm, I'm out. What is this? What does that mean? One night stand. One night stand. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know that one. Weird. Brian Fish asked me once in work chat. In work chat. Remember, this is the public work chat. How much I would charge him for a one night stand. I thought he was joking, so I replied a million dollars. He was like, no, I'm serious. I just laughed it off. I didn't report it because my team manager was Maggie, and I really hated being alone with, in a room with Maggie. 
Yeah, once Maggie was let go, confirmed at the time with blank, he was the only one watching my back. I literally went sprinting down the building. I was cheering when Maggie was gone. We got another one. Kevin Meyer, who still works for Blizzard. Why is he still employed there? Hey, here's the, here's the TikTok. Like, I'm sorry this man had me crying his first day as my team manager, and every opportunity preyed on my confidence issues to pit me against my own female reps. I mean, it didn't work because I'm not a something-something. Fuck, fucked asshole? I don't know. But one of my temp preps said he, he did this really fucked up shit where he tried to make me target her by pointing out she was skinny and I was and attractive and I wasn't. That dude, he also verbally abused me to the, and, wa and wants to the point that I almost punched him. I was going through senior training when he was going through TM training, so we were doing class together and he said something very offensive, but I was too timid to report it. Another girl did, and he thought it was me and pulled me aside and to talk to me about it. It was very awkward. I think that's the guy in the TikTok. He's not employed at Blizzard, though. But I do think that's the same guy. Which means to say, remember, other people said he was one of the good ones. So even he was engaging in this to some degree. Even he was engaging with this to some degree. And was also a victim himself, remember? And that's possible, too. People who are victims can also victimize others. Kevin Meyer, good guy from the Austin office who went to Irvine. Sarcasm. This is another person. He's a very aggressive person, and he's definitely going to know that it's me that said this. I h truly hope he leaves me alone because I'm not in the emotional state to handle him coming at me. Redirect him to me if he comes to you. Honestly, I'll just block him. I don't give two shits about what anyone at Blizzard thinks about me anymore. Honestly, the hesitation for a moment that maybe I did makes me sick to my stomach because he really made me feel like shit, and he made me cry a lot. Truly anything that Kevin may try to direct at me pales in comparison to the pressure that I have on my shoulders right now. Man, that makes me really sad. That's how shitty he was to me. That I'm still scared of him. Next. Alex Korneff, who's been reported multiple times for sexual harassment at the Austin office. The accounts of two different women below. He, he is well known. And let's not forget Alex Korneff. I'm pretty sure he still works there and everybody just got a story about him. He's very gross. Oh, I definitely talked to him about, uh, talked to him when they interviewed me for this. The first time I ever spent a minute talking to him, he opened up his phone and showed me nude pictures of his ex-girlfriend. What the fuck? What the absolute fuck? I was at a Ren Fair once with, with, uh, with somebody. And we ran into Korneff, Alex Korneff, and he came and sat next to me while Blank and I were watching a show and whispered in my ear that he doesn't have to behave at a Ren Fair because it's not the office. Holy shit. Another addition to the Alex Korneff, and also adding Tom Flint, who was a service level coordinator in the Austin office. He and Tom Flint used to pull this shit all the time, and no matter how much they complained, they remained employed and did not stop. Yep, this is this actually is very reminiscent of the Matt Gates allegations showing Congress people photos of women. It's a, it's a thing. It's a conquest thing. There's a lot of these people are 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 they're locked in this mindset of conquest, and it's it's predatory and disgusting. I have another one for you from the Austin office. This person attempted to show solidarity on another post when he when he has sexually harassed many women, including myself. And now HR, HR has failed us again. Ladies of Blizzard. He got fired for sexually harassing a customer, asking for nudes. One time, Sean Motto saw me on a dating website and uh, or something when I was single and messaged me at work, asking if I was interested in hooking up with him and his wife. I went to HR, but nothing happened. One time I tried to report to discrimination by uh, by the HR manager and they told me the only one I could report it to was the manager who had discriminated. I'm fine calling someone out publicly. This occurred in the Austin office, but there was one person named Aaron Pilling who was a service service level coordinator that frequently harassed the women in the Latin American department, my department. Even after I left, I heard stories of his harassment. He continues to harass me for years. I hate myself for, for never shutting him down before. And it wasn't until 20, uh, 2018 that I did. Below are the screenshots. 
Yeah, when you have your pre-wedding party, I'd like to volunteer to be your male dude. The stripper? Uh, I was thinking last fun before you sail on the ship of marital bliss. Dude, what? He He's like, oh, you should fuck me before you get married. What the fuck? He was also doing the same thing to a friend of mine at the exact same time. Yeah, I have my dress on. So do you think it's appropriate to hit on women in relationships? Nah, but you're Danny. It's like some- it's like this thing of always banter, nothing of substance. I'm sorry if I'm out of line, I'll stop. Yeah, you are. You should also leave the other chicks- you should also leave the other chicks you're hitting up alone too. Hmm, I talked to a dude I'm gonna hang out with. Sorry, uh, sorry, I'll stop. I didn't mean to offend you. Wow. Jesus Christ. Okay. So now we have to do these. These are, uh, current employees who have spoken on the incident, okay? These are current- we, we have now- we've moved out of the ex-employees, and now we are in the current employees category. Um, wow. <clears throat> here we go. So here we go. This is- this is a post from October 8th, 2016. So, interesting night. Ended with Abro Siabi, which is the guy we're talking, we've been talking about a lot, calling me and my friends bitches and pulled a do you know who I am? So that was a good time. Do you know who I am? I'm a Blizzard lead. I'm a Blizzard senior exec. Jesus. Bubble Bobble says, I'm a bit confused as to what to do. Should I cancel my WoW subscription? I enjoy playing the game, but I don't want to support this type of behavior. Boycotting the game is not going to help. Being aware of this, supporting people, boosting their stories, listening to this shit, and sending... You know, you want to know what would help here? You could send a fucking letter to Blizzard. You could make a public statement at Blizzard. Put the pressure on them. But boycotting the games isn't going to help. There are too many active players. There's too much money involved. It's never going to happen. If you don't personally feel comfortable contributing to it, stop playing. But a boycott is not going to do it. And keep in mind that these people, all of these people mentioned, loved these games. They put their blood and sweat into these games. Yeah, when they have a Q&A at BlizzCon, bring it up. Yeah, I, I, exactly. This one reminds us. Afra Siabi's cubicle was called the Cosby Suite around the office. This is documented in the state's lawsuit that Afra Siabi is so infamous that it was called the Cosby Suite. And publicly shame these people. Make them uncomfortable. Anyway, here we go. Jay Allen Brack pulled all of the women into a room the day after this happened and asked us about our concerns. At the time, I thought it was an inappropriate response. He reassured us that actions had been taken, TM. He remained creative director of WoW for months and years after, then was given an opportunity to lead his own unannounced projects. Consequences indeed. And by all the women, I mean every single female identifying person on the WoW team. It was a full room. Dozens of women. I wondered for months afterwards what Alex thought and said about us behind closed doors. Jesus. This is Christy Golden. Christy Golden was, uh, wrote some of the WoW novels, um, and works, um, works on Blizzard's, on some of the stories at Blizzard still. Thanks to all who've reached out. I stand in solidarity with my sisters who have been so poorly treated in our industry. My experience coming in as an older woman already known at Blizzard granted me respect that should be extended to all women. Please listen to their voices. Unfortunately, this seems to be growing contentious, so I'll be muting this thread. Thanks to all who've been civil. Christy Golden, uh, Christy Golden doesn't work like, like, Christy Golden doesn't spend a lot of time, like, a part of the Blizzard dev team. She's a writer. She writes books. And also, like, helps consult for lore and stuff. Okay, hold on. I need to address something. Oh, she writes the major storylines in-game. Okay, okay. I, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that she wrote, that she does that now. Okay, hold on a second. I need to address something. Six Foot Ant says, Boycotting does not punish victims. It punishes management. The victims are already getting fired for speaking up. They can't get double fired. 
Do not let yourself make excuses when what you really want to do is keep playing your comfy games. Do not pretend you're playing WoW for victims. Dude, you are missing the point. You are missing the motherfucking point. Most of these victims have explicitly said they don't care for a, boy a boycott. That a boycott doesn't help what they're doing. That is not, that is not, you're, you're, you're literally contradicting the victims themselves. The boycott doesn't hurt management because unless it's organized, there's not enough people who are going to boycott. You, you want to know what hurts them? Dragging their name through the dust. Dragging their name through the mud so that they can never, ever escape it. Making it known by every person that the gaming industry is built on skeletons. The reality is, a lot of these people are amazing artists, and a lot of these teams have done incredible, incredible works of art that are being... And you'll notice something. We're gonna mix a little... We're gonna mix in a little bit of... Let's get a little... Let's get a little, you know, Marxist in here, shall we? You'll notice that the people who are responsible for this are the ones scraping all the money off the top. They're the executives. They're paid no matter what. A boycott will not succeed. A boycott is not going to do anything. You are not contributing to this by playing a game. This is happening at every single gaming company in the gaming industry. The art, same thing for movies, by the way. The Me Too movement was based in the film industry. We know how bad it is. There has to be something more than consumeristic solutions to this. Solidarity. Make it hurt. All right, let's chill, okay? We're gonna get back to this, okay? We're gonna focus back on what matters here, not people's stupid takes. Okay, next. Next, we have Songbird HS. This is the, uh, this is one of the hosts. Uh, oh, current Hearthstone associate game designer. The people that I work with every day are wonderful, and I'm confident that every single one of them would go to bat for me. I've never felt uncomfortable or disrespected in my time on Team 5. I'm really fucking sad that the same can't be said for women on other teams. I can only speak to my experiences. I hope that if anybody needs help or support that they would feel comfortable coming to me. I don't know what else to say. I'm just really, really mad. Actually, screw it. I've had lots of bad experiences, just not in the last two years. I think I'm so quick to defend my coworkers now because I spent years being disrespected and lied to before that. I craved approval so fucking badly for so long. Some of the people I had bad experiences with are already gone. Some of them I think have grown a lot. I've gotten apologies from some. I've moved on for the most part. Damn. Hearthstone AMA 22. Ask me a question about Hearthstone or design or anime. Pretty tough day to be a Blizzard fan with the lawsuit news coming out. I doubt you can comment on it, but what do you do on the Hearthstone side to keep the culture positive and inclusive? I haven't looked into it much, but from what I did read, it sounds horrifying. I hope whatever truth comes out of it lands as harshly as possible on those responsible. In the 10 years I've been here, I've honestly thought of Blizzard as the most open and inclusive place that there is. So what we've seen so far is that it seems like people on the Hearthstone team, which is a relatively fresh team, seems to be doing slightly better. Oh yeah, yeah, Lady Kelgana brings up a good point. Bobby Kotick has literally complained publicly that nobody will date him because of all the shit he's been exposed for. It works. Yes, it does. That is a way. When nothing else works, you can always do that. Here we go. This is Celestalon, systems and initial game designer on Hearthstone. I stand with and support women and minorities at Blizzard and elsewhere in the industry. Harassment and discrimination have no place here or anywhere, and I join them in demanding accountability. This shit has to stop. I'll eagerly be an ally any way that I can. Thank you for sharing. I hear you and believe you, and I'm not just leaving it at that. Damn. All right. Damn. Celestialon. Looks like this person's committed. Zorbrix. WoW server and live ops producer at Blizzard. I stand with every woman, both at Blizzard and across this industry, who has ever been a victim of harassment, sexual assault, or discrimination. This shit is so fucking unacceptable. I believe you. There's not really anything I can add, but absolutely believe women and support them. Fire harassers. Hold them accountable. True. This is the senior game designer for Encounters at WoW. I make the things that you fight, he says. 
I don't want to hear another, we want to do better and encourage our employees to be better. That should be obvious. I want to see a statement of this person was found to do X and does not represent our values. As such, this person is no longer under our employment. This is a very firm statement. This is a pretty firm statement. But this person doesn't seem to be in a position by which they can, uh, by which they can um, actually, you know, do anything about it. I don't know. Honestly, I don't want someone fired now. I want someone fired after the first clear incident, I don't know, 14 years ago. I want their ability to keep abusers around to be succinctly, con concretely, and absolutely curtailed to nothing. Zero toler tolerance means nothing right, right now, but it needs to. Yep. This is Chris Kalecki, game designer previously at Blizzard. Hmm. I don't know if they're still at Blizzard. Saddened to hear about the alleged stories of sexual harassment at Blizzard, in particular my team of 13 years, the World of Warcraft team. My DMs are open for anyone on the team to reach out to talk or reflect on the situation. While I love the team events, the beer kegs, Vegas parties, in hindsight, excessive alcohol in the workplace, including at events off campus, correlates too much with inappropriate conduct and questionable behavior to be worth it. Lastly, while Blizzard was quick to address the incidents I was aware of, allegedly they were slow to act on others. If the accused was a VIP, there should be a zero tolerance pol policy no matter your title. Change has to come from the top. Grassroots rallying and nice words can't fix systemic to toxicity. I'm very lucky to be on a team now that treats me well, but being treated like a competent human being shouldn't be a matter of luck. True. Whenever something comes to light, uh, customer service gets pr hit, hit pretty hard with verbal abuse. Please be kind to customer service today, and don't forget you may be speaking to one of the Blizzard women you were saying you support when you open up a ticket or web chat. That's a good point right there. That's a fucking good point. Yep, I knew it. I fucking knew it. I, I knew it. I knew it was. Far-right trolls use coronavirus meme to spread subtle anti-Chinese racism. Far-right Twitter and 4chan users have found a new meme amid the coronavirus outbreak. On 4chan, users are photoshopping hazmat suits onto everyone, from Pepe the Frog to Alex Jones, in response to coronavirus, a disease that is believed to have originated in the now-quarantined Wuhan, China. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Okay. So next, we're going to read the statement by the WoW, the biggest WoW subreddit, and then the execs. Yep. I know. We got it. We'll get there. We'll get there. As moderators, this is a statement by the moderators of the WoW community. As moderators of the subreddits for, subreddits for Activision Blizzard's games, we vehemently condemn the sexual harassment and hostile work environment alleged in the recent lawsuit between Activision Blizzard and the state of California. We will not be censoring this topic on our subreddits. We, by the way, it has been being censored on the Blizzards, on the Blizzard forums. The Blizzard forums have been deleting posts like motherfuckers. We will not be censoring this topic on our subreddits. We do not serve Activision Blizzard. We are unpaid volunteers with no affiliation to the company. Above all else, we serve our individual communities, and we believe this is an important discussion to be had. Having said that, discussion surrounding this topic still needs to adhere to the rules of our subreddits. Victim blaming, sexism, harassment of others will not be tolerated. We will try to keep the discussion consolidated to the existing main thread for convenience and visibility. We stand by the victims of this situation. We hope that this lawsuit is resolved in such a way that justice is met for those who deserve it. We call for these issues to be addressed by Activision Blizzard appropriately and exhaustively. As a group of moderators, we are deeply saddened about these events and the hostile work environment created by them. We strive to make our communities inclusive and safe for all and urge Activision Blizzard to take steps to demonstrate that they are doing the same. This is actually a based ass statement by the mods. This is a based ass statement by the mods, I gotta say. So this is the thread by Chris Metzen. Chris Metzen is one of the founders of Blizzard. And now, apparently, is running War Chief Gaming, a development studio and tabletop gaming club. All right, I didn't know about that. But he was one of the original founders. This is the guy who wrote basically all of the original stories of StarCraft, Diablo, Warcraft. This guy is the fucking writer guy. Now, something you should know about Chris Metzen is that Chris Metzen left Blizzard a couple of years ago. Chris Metzen left Blizzard because his mental health had gotten so bad from working at Blizzard that he never wanted, that he, he thought about never making games again. Or he only wrote Diablo 3? Okay, my bad. He, yes, he voiced Thrall, Deathwing, etc., etc. So, Metzen was present for all of this. 
There's almost no chance he didn't know about this. It's just true. So let's continue. We failed, and I'm sorry. To all of you at Blizzard, those of you I know, and those of you whom I've never met, I offer you my very deepest apologies for the part I played in a culture that fostered harassment, inequality, and indifference. There is no excuse. We failed too many people when they needed us because we had the privilege of not noticing, not engaging, not creating necessary space for the colleagues who needed us as leaders. I wish my apology could make any type of difference. It can't. After reading so many of these experiences that I have been shared over the past few days, a lot of common themes scream out. I was conditioned to think it was normal. I never spoke up for fear of reprisal. I didn't trust HR. Nothing was going to change anyway. On and on it goes. Friends and colleagues, people I have valued and admired for years, were directly harmed because I was not present enough to ask, to listen, to hear these stories when it mattered. I'm left feeling the same shock, disgust, and anger that many of you are, and having trouble reconciling the place I knew, loved, and worked in for so long with the hard reality that has been presented over the past few days. It's like staring at two totally different worlds, but it's not. It's just the one world, and the yawning disconnect between my perception from the top and the crushing reality of many of you that many of you experience fills me with profound shame. Words are cheap. Not sure what grand sweeping promises really do either. Accountability starts with people, not corporations or platitudes or values, cast an iron around a statue. That's a direct call out, by the way. The values that they have on a statue out front, he's directly calling them out there. Unless we as individuals, and we, I mostly mean men, start to walk in far greater awareness, compassion, and empathy for the women around us in the whole of our lives, not just at work, then nothing changes. So many of us have women we cherish in our lives. I am a father of three, including two daughters, and I want them to flourish in workplaces of their choosing. But we shouldn't need a special connection to the women in our lives in order to protect them, to listen to them, to give them space. It's not enough to just say I see you and I hear you when terrible things happen to women in and out of the workplace. We have to be present enough and willing to ask them what their experiences are day to day and then do everything we can to support them with the respect, dignity, and opportunities that they deserve. More than making the conscious choice to act this way, we must constantly and thoughtfully model this behavior to those around us, hold each other accountable, and be ready to be held to account and listen at every stage of the game. Chris Metzen. Now, hmm. <sighs> now, I will notice, Metzen so far is the only, like, upper leadership that we've seen so far who, um, who's actually talked about the things that we've talked about here. He specifically mentions, I was conditioned to think it was normal. I never spoke up for fear of reprisal. I didn't trust HR. Chris Metzen, at the very least, has actually read these things. I don't know if Chris Metzen is a bad guy. I don't know to what level Chris Metzen um, engaged in this sort of stuff. It's very hard to say. It's almost guaranteed that he, at the very least, looked the other way at numerous occasions. But... It is also true that Chris, Chris Metzen suffered as a result of his time at Blizzard as well. He's been the closest to being one of the good men we have, and that's sad. Yeah. It sounds like he's owning up to it, but it's a bit late, you know? Maybe, but also, you know, that's a hard thing to write. And keep in mind, like, another thing to say... um. So there's two there's two things to say here. One, in his in his letter, he does directly call out some of the important things the victims were saying, which is good. Keep in mind that Chris Metzen, notice notice how much attention this letter from Chris Metzen got. 876 retweets, 229 quote retweets. A lot of people are seeing Chris Metzen, a former leader here, it repeat repeat the most important messages here. That's a good thing. Not good enough. Not even close to good enough, but it's a good thing. And yes, of course, there is another problem. Uh, Shaloon, do you have a link to that, by the way? I was hoping to see that. Yes, I've heard of that. We'll talk about that after. We have to finish all of the investigation, and then we do the takes.
I will say that of all of the execs that we've seen so far, um, Chris Metzen is the best. His his response has been the best so far, which is not saying much, but it's something. If you have a link to that to that rebuke, that'd be interesting. By the way, just so you know, this is like um uh there's like huge delays in WoW right now. This seems to be seriously fucking up the uh the process of the of the company right now. Like this is like ridiculous. This is such an ex this is so explosive. I don't even I mean, yeah, good. It's good, but but it's wild to to notice like how explosive this ha this is. Yes. Here we go. This is from Connie Griffith. Remember, Connie Griffith was the person who was there for 11 years. Here we go. Let's read this statement. Oh, this was a statement I didn't catch before. Wait, did he respond? Did he not respond? Did he just stop? Oh, he did. He just stopped. Wait, where's the rest of his thread? Wait, let's see. Does he, did he finish the thread? Here we go. As for Alex, I loved working with him and jamming in story meetings. He was someone I thought very highly of on the job, but we never interacted outside of story jams and such. I was never his boss. We never really interacted outside of doing the work or taking smoke breaks. We haven't worked together closely since um, since Wrath of the Lich King. I never heard a peep about him other than he, that he could be tough on his team or an asshole from time to time. So learning all this in the past week has been utterly shocking. Just reprehensible shit. And then, we see here, this statement makes me sick with the hypocrisy of it. You probably don't even remember this, but you were the one who told me I should stick to what I'm good at, which was apparently taking notes and organizing meetings. Way to mentor junior female talent. Remember, this person was at their company for fucking forever. Worked on Ghosts of Tsushima, Guild Wars 2, Wildstar, and much more. This is a scathing rebuke. Scathing rebuke here. So, again, Chris Metzen is not free of, of, of blame here. Not even close. Now, now we're gonna get into the, now we get into some of the, the spicy stuff, okay? This is really spicy, okay? This is from games journalist Jason Schreier, who is a fantastic writer and does very good coverage of all of this stuff, okay? Writes for Bloomberg. He was the one who leaked this, who, who wrote this whole story. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So here we go. This is where it gets real bloody, okay? Because Jason Schreier has attained internal, inf internal letters. J Blizzard President J. Allen Brack sent out an email to staff last night addressing the allegations from this week's explosive lawsuit, calling them extremely troubling and saying that he'd need to be meeting with many of you to answer questions and discuss how we can move forward. This is, remember, this is a letter by J. Allen Brack. Hello, Blizzard. I personally have a lot of emotions coming. Oh, here, let me put a face to the, to this, to this. There you go. You might know this guy. He's kind of infamous. If you're a Blizzard fan, you might know this guy. He's kind of infamous. He's kind of infamous. Um, guy is uh, not very good at PR. Let's put it that way, okay? Let's just... This is the guy. This is him. Yeah, you guys don't have mobile phones. That guy. Yeah, this guy, uh, not very liked. Not liked by the fans. I'll say that much, okay? Not liked by the fans. That's the you don't have phones guy and much, much more. Tons. Tons of shit. Hello, Blizzard. I personally have a lot of emotions coming out of yesterday, and I know you do too. The allegations and the hurt of current and former employees are extremely troubling. I know many of you would like to receive more clarity. While I can't comment on the specifics of the case as it's an open investigation, what I can say is that the behavior detailed in the allegations is completely unacceptable. It goes with saying it is completely unacceptable for anyone in the company to face discrimination or harassment. Oh, Wyatt Chang was the one that said the phone's comment. But yeah, Brack was the one who backed him up. My, my mistake. Yeah, he did the non-apology about the Taiwan incident. Yeah. 
Next. It goes with saying, this is such a weird way. Again, guy's terrible at PR. I don't understand why he would write it like this. That everyone should feel safe working here, whether we are on campus, blah, blah, blah. It goes with saying it takes courage to come forward. All claims brought to the company are investigated by internal and when needed, external investigators. We know this is a lie. We know he's lying right here. We've just... All of you here can bear witness to this. Here on Drama Mama, we've gone through all the receipts, corroborating stories across a, over a decade of individual employees' words, publicly a part of the record. He's fucking lying. This guy is motherfucking lying to your face, and you all know it because you watched this coverage. Stepping back, when I talked with Bobby Kotick about taking this job, one of the first things I mentioned was a revered saint of the Brack household, Gloria Steinem. Growing up, the value of women as equals, understanding the work that had been done for equal treatment, and the fact there was still much to do were common themes. This is just one of the reasons why the fight for equality is incredibly important to me. People with different backgrounds, views, and experiences are essential for Blizzard, our teams, and our player community. I disdain bro culture and have spent my, cult my career fighting against it. Iterating on our culture with the same intensity that we bring to our games is imperative, with our values acting as our North Star. This is some of the most important work we do, both as professionals and human beings. A company is more than a legal construct that exists as a piece of paper in a filing cabinet in Delaware. The people that work at the company m make it what it is, through their actions and creations. Each of us plays a role in maintaining a place of safety for one or another. And it's also up to each of us to continue to craft the Blizzard we want and commit to doing our part in keeping Blizzard great, but always aspiring for more. The leadership team and I will be meeting with many of you to answer questions and discuss how we can move forward. In the meantime, I want you to know that you can talk to any manager, any HR partner, any member of the legal team, or to anyone on the executive team, including Hey Jay, I don't know who that is. If you feel more comfortable talking to someone outside of Blizzard or prefer to be anonymous, you can contact the Way to Play Integrity Line. I feel angry, sad, and a host of other emotions. But I also feel grateful to work along a set of leaders and thousands of employees who join me in their commitment to continuous improvement. Thank you, Blizzard. Dude, we know. Oh, you can talk to any manager, HR partner, any member of the Blizzard legal team. No, you fucking can't. You. You. you lit, your HR team was complicit in this. Every single motherfucking person who stepped forward on this revealed that HR has been complicit. What a fucking shit-ass statement. What a fucking bullshit-ass statement. Absolute garbage. This thing should have gone straight into the trash. And also, we know this is the guy who gave personal counseling to the person who was repeatedly groping, repeatedly raping people in the office. Yeah, this is the guy who made the Cosby suite possible. Fucking bullshit. So, thank God somebody leaked this bullshit. Because can you imagine being one of the victims and getting this in your fucking email box? Activision Blizzard executive Fran Townsend, who was the Homeland Security Advisor to George W. Bush from 2004 to 2007 and joined Activision in March, sent out a very different kind of email that has some Blizzard employees fuming. Oh yeah, that's right. That's right. The torture lady. The, the fucking torture lady. Yeah, George W. You know, waterboarding? The person who oversaw... Fucking waterboarding in America works for this fucking company now. And and we're going to get to read their statement. We're going to get to read their internal statement because it got motherfucking leaked. Yeah, torture lady. Yeah, worked George Bush 2004 to 2007, oversaw fucking waterboarding, advocated for this.
Jessica Metal brings us a quote. Waterboard anyone that comes forward. It's the only way to keep America safe. Is that a real quote? Is that a real fucking quote? Is that the real fucking quote? Holy shit. Oh, it's a meme. Okay, holy fuck. Expose the Ju Zoomers to George Bush? Look, for those of you who don't know, let's just, let me just give you a quick roundup, okay? Yeah, oh yeah, she was literally, yes, hold on. Simric, she testified before the Senate and told John McCain that torture was not a big deal. Yes, that did happen. I don't know the exact words, but yes. Let me just, let me just explain to you George Bush, okay? George Bush was a, uh, a, a, a bumbling, uh, simpleton whose cabinet was filled with the most heinous liars and murderers in the United States. His cabinet was jammed packed with every conser neoconservative war hawk that you can imagine. And under George Bush, a, a war was fabricated, which resulted in millions of deaths. Thousands of Americans died. America had a torture arc. We never left it. We never fucking left it. We never left the torture arc. George W. Bush pushed openly and loudly to preserve CIA torture methods. Many of the people tortured by the CIA were later found to have given false confessions because they were tortured so severely that they lied to, to hope to hope to God that it would end the torture. And they weren't even guilty. They had just been scooped up and, and imprisoned in a faraway land. Yeah, Guantanamo's still open. So yeah, now we now you've got an idea. And this lady who we're about to read, Fran Townsend, She's about to tell us her view on this situation. We're about to hear what she has to say about the situation. So let's find out, shall we? This is where it gets real bloody. Everyone, as the executive sponsor of the, a of the Activision Blizzard Employee Women's Network and our chief compliance officer, I wanted to reach out to you. I know this has been very difficult for many of us. A recently filed lawsuit presented a distorted and untrue picture of our company, including factually incorrect old and out of context stories, some from more than a decade ago. What context? What fucking possible context does, does cubicle crawls exist in? What fucking context does a cubicle crawl, does a fucking cubicle rape rape train have to do what what possible context could justify that what fucking possible context could justify any of the shit that we read even the even the least bad shit that we read yeah these stories are old obviously they were never nothing was ever done about it that's why there's a giant lawsuit because every single one of these people without without fail tried to go through the proper channels and got fucked for it. They got fucked for it. Let's continue. The Activision companies of today, the Activision companies that I know are great companies with good value. When I joined the executive leadership team, I was certain I was joining a company where I would be valued, treated with respect, and provided opportunities equal to those afforded to the men of the company. For me, this has been true during my time. As a leader, I am committed to making sure that the experience I have is the same as the rest of the organization. It isn't. It isn't. We have a leadership team that is committed to these principles in every way. I am proud to be a part of a company that takes a hardline approach to inappropriate or hostile work environments and sexual harassment issues. No, you don't. You do not. You, we, it is demonstrable that you do not take a hardline approach. Why would this lawsuit have even existed 
if you took a hardline approach. If you took a hardline approach, numerous current people have standing cases against them. Numerous of your current execs have outstanding cases against them. And you're saying you have a zero tolerance policy? Our speak up campaign reinforces our zero tolerance for retaliation against those who do speak up. We've made significant investments to foster inclusive behaviors and to reflect greater diversity within our leadership teams, including investing in and strengthening our DE and I employee networks, creating global networks to bring together the efforts in all of our business units and the ex introduction of executive sponsors, introducing learning and development programs, including inclusive hiring training, amplifying internal programs such as Way to Play Heroes and the, the recurring Speak Up campaign, reinforcing channels for employees to report violations, including the ask list, introducing an employee relations team de dedicated to investigating employee concerns. Doesn't seem like it's worked. Continuing to require all employees to take equality and diversity training, including anti-harassment training, and have done so for many years. We put tremendous effort into creating fair compensation policies that reflect our commitment to equal opportunity. We review compensation regularly and feel confident that we pay all employees fairly for equally or substantially similar work. Objectively false, by the way. Verifiably false. That's gonna co that is coming out in this lawsuit. We know for a fact that they don't do that. We know for a fact, it is a fact that they don't. You are, we are being lied to right now. We're being lied to right now. <sighs> we take proactive steps to ensure that pay and advancement are driven by merit. We reward performance and we conduct extensive anti-discrimination trainings, including those who are part of the compensation process. We work at a company that truly values equality and fairness. Rest assured that leadership is committed to continuing to maintain a safe, fair, and inclusive workspace. We cannot let egregious actions of others and a truly meritless and irresponsible lawsuit. I just... A meritless and irresponsible lawsuit. Well, that's my goal, Ultimate, is to show this fucking shit. A truly meritless and irresponsible lawsuit damage our culture of respect and equal opportunity for all employees. Ah, yes. Ah, yes, I know when I think of a culture of respect and equal opportunity, I think of, uh... Dudes showing up drunk at work, spitting alcohol into your mouth while they try to force themselves on you, groping you, cornering you physically when you're alone in the office and threatening you. I think about having a suite that's called by everyone at the job the Cosby Suite. Yes, that's what I think of when I think of a culture of equal opportunity and respect. Indeed. Surely that is what comes to mind. We still got more to go. <clears throat> we aspire in our company to do great things in our games, in our impact on society and in our work environment. We continue to hold firm to our principles and invest as we have in the past, the resources to ensure equality opportunities for all employment employees. We remain committed as leadership team to doing what is right. And this is the lawsuit. Now we're going to look at the text of the lawsuit. Because we've looked at a lot. But we want to look at... I want to look at the lawsuit itself. So stick with me, chat. Oh, we got this one. A story that came out just an hour ago. Did we watch... Did we look at this one? Nope. We haven't looked at this one yet. All right. This is fresh. Let's do it. Here we go. This is a fresh one. Joy Fields. X-Blizzard. 06 to, o to 2012. This person was here in 06. Okay. Here we go. Wow. All right, let's read it. We're reading it. Buckle up. This one's fresh. This one just came out an hour ago. So we're going to read it. Joy Fields. My name is Joy Fields. I worked at Blizzard Entertainment from 2006 to 2012. I started at Blizzard straight out of college at age 20 in the customer service department. In 2009, I left customer service for creative development where I worked as an assistant curator. My time there was twofold. 
I loved a lot of the people I worked with and remain friends with them to this day. But there was a dark underbelly that every woman at Blizzard knew about. I want to talk about that. Throughout my time at Blizzard, I was constantly treated by men like a sex object. Men in positions of power would offer me trips and money if I would just go out on a date with them. A coworker would constantly neg me as a way of flirting and just generally har harass me. When I stood up for myself, they would play the victim and tell me to calm down. Another coworker lured me into his office, closed the door, and turned the lights off. He then sat next to me on the couch and started talking to me about sex and tried to pressure me to sleep with him. I was harassed by both my senior and lead in customer service to the point of openly sobbing at my desk. I have heard from my female friends countless times about instances of men speaking about my body and being generally lewd about me. Some men had the audacity to straight up ask me if my breasts were real to my face and would argue with me when I said yes. These are the types of things that I dealt with on a day-to-day -day basis. I want to point out a few specific instances of sexual harassment by people in positions of power who should have known better. A Battle of the Bands event, a rock band competition that is attended by much of the company, was judged by a panel of senior Blizzard employees. I was playing guitar and just generally rocking out for our performance. During the judging portion of the event, one of the judges commented on a microphone in front of the entire company about my breasts. He liked how much I was jumping up and down and thought I had big talent. Everyone laughed. It was a joke and I was forced to laugh along with it. Jeff Donias, wow, I know that name, who was the head of C-Dev, was, was shaking a shake weight in his office when I walked past in the hallway. He stopped to make a joke how I should give the shake weight a try in case I ever needed the talent for giving hand jobs in the future. I am naming this person specifically because he should have known better. He was in a position of power in a, of a small department. This kind of behavior from men in power was not just exclusive to the dev teams. It happened on the stat satellite and support teams as well. I was lucky enough to have a direct supervisor who heard this comment and stood up for me. It was the first and only time anyone in a position of power stood up for me at all. He made it okay for me to be upset by what was happening. Without him, I would have had to take it as a joke and just smile. When I first started working at Blizzard, someone found my deviant art page. I was a nude model during college and I posted my work there. They started an email chain with a link to my modeling and shared it around the office. By my second week at work, everyone on the floor had seen me naked. The rumors about it followed me for the rest of my time at the company. What the fuck? The harassment didn't stop at work, and it wasn't just harassment. Assault happened too. Men would pretend to be your friend, and then they would assault you when you felt safe. I have been groped, coerced, and forced into sexual situations at the homes of coworkers and Blizzard events like BlizzCon and holiday parties. Men not taking no as an answer and pushing for sex once they had me alone with them. These are the kinds of people that Blizzard would hire. These are the kinds of people who got promoted and were put in positions of power. These people were the main culprits for the toxic culture of Blizzard. This kind of behavior was prevalent in every department I worked in. It was a hard line to toe. I was sex positive, sexually empowered woman, and I believe that was often exploited due to power imbalances and the pressure to be chill, quote unquote. This kind of behavior was so incredibly normalized, I never saw any of it as a problem until years later and some major distance from Blizzard. I was someone who tried hard to be a part of the boys club, to fit in, to be liked, and to secure my career. I feel the need to apologize for that and for any behavior I ever exhibited that made anyone feel uncomfortable in any way. I'm sorry I didn't do more to realize how bad things were sooner. I'm sure there are many people who would have stepped up, but were also trying to fit in. I feel like they are victims of this culture as well. I believe this culture was fostered by Blizzard's hiring practices. Hires happen based on a culture fit more than anything else. And as we can see, the culture is toxic and one of sexual harassment and assault. For, for my own part, I'm not sure if my transfer into C-Dev was based on merit alone, as I was told multiple times around those that I was only hired because of my body and for the opportunity of sex. Imagine being told you're a trophy hire all the time, only to be laid off when Blizzard thinks it's time to cut the budget. The imposter syndrome was overwhelming. Oh my god, this is devastating. This culture is intentional. As a Blizzard employee, you are constantly reminded of the devotion required to persist in such a dream job. Extravagant amounts of money are spent to impress and fascinate employees and distract them from their situation. How lucky everyone must be to work at a company so cool, right? In the end, it's all just tactics, 
tactics to hide the toxic environment while also providing a, a place for it to thrive. And these toxic tactics worked even on someone like me, who was a stranger to Blizzard's games before I began working with them. I consider myself to be one of the lucky ones. Oh, not again. Oh no, oh my god, it's gonna kill me. Every one of these women who was horribly abused considers themselves to be one of the lucky ones. Oh my god. Oh my god. Other women were put through far worse than I was. I believe every woman who has spoken on this issue thus far. Blizzard needs to be held accountable for what was done and what is still happening. I don't believe that those at the top had no idea what was happening. They knew, they enabled it, and it's long past time for change. I'm very glad we covered this. I'm very glad we covered this. Okay, so this person is going to be adding their story to the lawsuit. Good. Yep, look, here's his fucking official salary. His official salary is one million four hundred four hundred ninety four thousand and total his total income was a hundred and fifty four million. That's with bonuses. Bobby Kodak. We did finish Torture Bitch's email. We did finish Torture Bitch's email. We did. There's another thing I was going to check real quick. Numerous complaints about unlawful. So let's look at the facts, shall we? We're going to read through. Here we go. Here's the facts. This is really good right here. This is fucking, this is good for us to talk about. Defendants have engaged in and continue to perpetuate discriminatory practices regarding pay, assignment, promotion, and other terms and conditions of employment, which negatively affect and impact female employees. Again, J. Allen Brack and Fran both lied. These discriminatory practices began at higher when women were offered lower compensation and less lucrative job assignments and opportunities than their male counterparts. Defendants paid female employees significantly less in starting pay than their male counterparts at higher. This pattern of practice and violations were continuing. So by the way, this is the facts. These are the facts that have been verified already and are in the case. So just know that once again, Blizzard is fucking lying to you. Women were afforded less stock and incentive pay opportunities. Female employees were overwhelmingly assigned into lower grades and levels without stock and incentive pay opportunities or less opportunities in general. Female employees received less stock and incentive compensation than male employees. This pattern or practice and violations were continuing, which means they're still ongoing. Women were steered into the lower levels of defendants' hierarchy and often had to work harder and longer to earn equal promotion and other opportunities as their male counterparts. As an example, a female employee working for Blizzard Entertainment was assigned to a lower level role, e denied equal pay, and subsequently sought a promotion because she had been carrying out duties exceeding her job description. She was repeatedly told it was not her turn and others deserved a promotion in front of her. Ultimately, the employee was promoted after three years while her male counterpart was promoted within a year of his hire, despite having started several months after her. Her male counterpart was also assigned to leadership responsibilities, which she was not afforded, responsibilities which furthered the male, male employee's ability to get promoted. In another example, a female employee who worked with Blizzard Entertainment was assigned to a lower level, denied equal pay, and passed over for a promotion despite multiple factors that suggested she earned it. Highly rated performance reviews generated significantly more revenue in her marketing campaigns than her male counterparts, and she ran almost twice as many campaigns as her male counterparts. Despite her accomplishments, her male counterpart was invited to have monthly or weekly one-on-one -on -one meetings with the vice president. She was not afforded these same opportunities, and unsurprisingly was passed over for promotion in favor of her male counterpart. Similarly, other female employees at Blizzard Entertainment were assigned to lower level roles, denied equal pay, and further delayed or passed over for promotions in favor of male counterparts who lacked the same experience or qualifications, but who were friends with the male head of the unit. 
A newly promoted male supervisor delegated his responsibilities to his now female subordinates in favor of playing Call of Duty! Other male supervisors would refuse to communicate with female employees going to their male counterparts for information. Female employees at Activision Publishing were also assigned to lower level roles, denied equal pay, and delayed or passed over for promotions of their male counterparts. As an example, a, a female human resources employee at Activision Publishing was delayed and passed over for promotion despite receiving positive performance reviews, doing substantially more work than her male counterpart, and taking over the actual responsibilities of the departing person. Female accounting employees at Activision Plub Publishing likewise note that male counterparts were paid significantly more than them despite doing the same or less work and having less responsibilities. Female employees were also not promoted because of Blizzard's discriminatory practices against pregnant female employees. A female employee working on, on one game team had assumed some of the responsibilities of a manager, but when she asked her male supervisor about being fairly paid for the management work she was actually doing and being promoted into that position, the manager commented that they could not risk promoting her as she might get pregnant and like being a mom too much. In general, female employees were further treated negatively due to their pregnancies. Supervisors ignored medical restrictions given to female employees and gave them negative evaluations when they were on maternity leave. Other female employees reported they were criticized for leaving to pick up their children from daycare while their male counterparts were playing video games. And female employees were kicked out of lactation rooms so employees could use the room for meetings. Women of color were particularly vulnerable targets of defendants' discriminatory practices. An African-American employee noted that it took her two years to be made into a permanent employee, while men hired after her were made permanent employees first. She was also micromanaged such that her male co-workers were known to be playing video games without any intervention by her supervisor, but her supervisor would call and check on her if she took a break to go for a walk. Another African-American employee who worked on information technology was similarly micromanaged by her manager, unlike the men on her team. When she requested time off to work, her manager made her write a one-page summary of how she would spend that time off of work when no one else ever had to do any write-up. The male supervisor also criticized her body language, despite male counterparts slouching in meetings, and she was scolded for asking for assistance while others could get help on similar tasks without any criticism. These experiences led female employees to leave their employment. As a result of these discriminatory pay, assignment, promotion, and other practices, defendants' gender pay gap is significant. Defendants paid female employees significantly less in base pay and a total compensation than their male counterparts. This is a pattern of practice and violations were continuing, aka ongoing. When women complained to human resource personnel about the lack of equal employment opportunities, especially in comparison to their male counterparts, their complaints fell on deaf ears or were met with an empty promise to investigate the issue. Indeed, despite having retained Paul Hastings LLP from 2015 to 2017 and Miller Law Group in 2018 to allegedly provide analysis related to compensation data, defendants failed to take effective and reasonable steps to prevent pay discrimination. Jesus fucking Christ. And here we go. Here's the sexual harassment. Female employees almost universally, listen to this. Okay, everybody, we've been reading off a lot of stuff, but listen to this. Female employees almost universally confirmed that working for defendants was akin to working in a frat house, which invariably involved male employees drinking and subjecting female employees to sexual harassment with no repercussions. Cube crawls in defendants' offices were common. Common! Common! Fucking caught. They were common! These things weren't even uncut. They were fucking happening all the time. Male employees proudly came into work hungover. Similarly, male employees would play video games during work, engage in banter about their sexual encounters, talk openly about female employees' bodies, and make numerous jokes about rape. This, as a product of this frat boy culture, women were subjected to numerous sexual comments and advances, groping and unwanted physical touching and other forms of harassment. A female employee noted that random male employees would approach her on the Blizzard worksite and comment on her breasts. Female employees working for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, make derogatory comments about rape, and otherwise engaging in demeaning behavior. XY Chelsea 2003 asks, what about what is a cube crawl? Cube crawl we talked about earlier. A cube crawl is like a pub crawl, but in the office. So a, a, a group of dudes would get drunk, and they would have drinks at each cubicle of women, and they would go around. And there were numerous, sep completely separate individuals in other departments that experienced being literally sexually assaulted during these cube crawls.
one of the one of the people who worked at Blizzard for 11 years talked about how they had uh no sorry 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 I'm getting this mixed up uh one of the people who's worked closely with Blizzard talked about a previous experience they had in a similar event where where someone forcibly kissed them and spit alcohol into their mouth That's a cube crawl. A cube crawl is like a pub crawl, except it takes place in an office and you go from women's cubicle to women's cubicle to women's cu cubicle. In a blatant example of defendants re of Blizzard's refusal to deal with a harasser because of his seniority or position, Alex Afriasabi, Af Afrasiabi, the former creative uh, director of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment was permitted to engage in blatant sexual harassment with little to no repercussions. During a company event, an annual convention called BlizzCon, Afra Siabi would hit on female employees, tell that we read this one already. That's the, this is the Cosby sweet one. And he was told, by the way, remember, remember J. Allen Brack telling you how they have a zero tolerance policy? Remember? Remember he said that in his fucking letter? Look at this. J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard Entertainment, allegedly had multiple conversations with Afra Siabi about his drinking and that he had been too friendly towards female employees at company events, but gave Afra Siabi, Siabi a slap on the wrist, just verbal counseling, in response to these incidents. In a tragic example of the harassment the defendants allowed to fester in their offices, a female employee committed suicide while on a company trip due to a sexual relationship that she'd been having with her male supervisor. The male supervisor was found by police to have brought a butt plug and lubricant on this business trip. Another employee confirmed that the deceased female employee may have been suffering from other sexual harassment at work prior to her death. Specifically, at a holiday party before her death, male co-workers were passing around a picture of the deceased's Vagina. There you have, there's the full story. There's the full story. All right. Okay. That's everything. We've done it. We've, we've done it. We've hit everything. We've covered everything. We've covered fucking everything, okay? And now we have to do the tape. Ubisoft has also had a sexual assault and sexual harassment explosion happen. Riot has had this happen. All of this shit, every single thing that you've heard here is currently ongoing at every other fucking gaming company right now. I want you to understand that. The story isn't out there. Not yet. But I promise you it's happening right now. Rockstar. Fucking, uh, fucking CD Projekt Red. Yeah, as the whole sales sta staff. Uh, it's, it's in the, it's in the lawsuit. I'm sure we'll find out more and more poor as things go on. EA. We need to, there's, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. So first of all, we've talked extensively about how the silencing, the silencing and the, and the, and the, and the gaslighting, but this is endemic to all entertainment industries. Just so you know, people think that you're lucky because you get to do uh, a work that is seen, that is, that is seen as prestigious. It isn't prestigious. It really isn't. Like, getting to work at Blizzard is 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 not should not be seen as prestigious. It is, it will be, and there's going to be some level of this no matter what, because any workplace, um uh any workplace that that gains enough notoriety is gonna is gonna develop a little bit of a mystique around it. But we need to combat this. Because this same shit, by the way, goes on in film. The same shit goes on in streaming. You know, you you all know, um, 
you all know that uh that I've talked about the harassment, the sexism, the fucking bullshit that you encounter in this industry. In the streaming industry, we're all contractors. We don't even go to a workplace. And those of us who do, guess what? Did you know that Twitch was one of the companies that was that was called out in all of this? Do we remember that one? Women in our world right now, everybody wants to think there's this idea that sexism is done, that misogyny is done, that the patriarchy has been taken apart and all this shit, but it really hasn't. It really hasn't at all. On a functional level, well, we've made improvements to some degree, but, like, this shit is still really bad, everybody. This shit is really, really bad. And if this doesn't, I, I hope that this coverage fucking shows that. Fucking reveals that that's the case. Because this is happening all over the place. And I can tell you right now that women who create art that you love, there is art out there that you cherish, art that has changed your life, that women have worked on, and those women are probably suffering because of shit like this. And it's way more common than you think because I know people who've been dealing to shit like this. We need to fix this. The takeaways are so grim. One of my favorite, Striped Kidder says, one of my favorite moments in realizing how fucked the world is when I was about 16 in the high school, world history. I asked my history teacher when we would get to the contributions of women and he point blank looked at me and said, we won't. He was very honest about it. He said it with zero hesitation. Yeah, all of this is a direct product of the way our society treats and looks at women. It makes me so fucking sad. And this is why when people talk, um, this is why I don't buy wholly into this myth of like, uh, eternal progress. There's this idea that like, oh yeah, you know, as capitalism marches on, we always have progress. But in truth, the, the few victories we've had have been so hard won. They've cost so many lives. They've cost so many, so much fucking sanity to be fixed. Yeah. Look, I started this out by goofing around at first about how much I love video games and then having a serious talk about how much I love video games. Video games have changed my life. They, like, I don't know what it is about video games. They they engage me as an art form like basically nothing else. And they are very important to me. They always have been. They always will be, I think. Um, but we can't just be consumers. Art, if we love art, we have to care about how that art is made. We have to care about the people who make that art. We have to care about that shit. And we have to be willing to look at the truth of how these things are produced. And I think that's true about other things as well. I think that's true about uh, animal um, animal consumption. I think we need to be very real about it. I think recognizing these truths will make us realize some of the things that we are uncomfortable with, some of the things we should be uncomfortable with. We should be uncomfortable with the fact that the entire gaming industry is built on rape. And quite literally, it really is built on rape. Please leave rev positive reviews of the indie games you play. Yep. I always do. Same thing as same reason why for the same reason that I ask people for uh, comments and likes like the video, by the way, comment and subscribe. Um, make sure you leave reviews for those games you like. 